yo, welcome to the Mallory Bros Podcast, episode 126. Um, happy Friday. We headed into the weekend. It's going to be a good weekend this weekend. Um, last weekend was a little rough, but I felt like we feeling mm-hmm. a little bit better this weekend. Shout out to everybody for making it through the week. For sure. Some of y'all had some rough weeks. Some of y'all had some tough mm-hmm. weeks. I ain't had enough weeks. I told Shorty, this ain't a bluff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they said, him. hold up, is he going off? I can't take him serious. My boy Terrell sitting right here. How was your weekend, sir? My weekend was chill, bro. Watched some good movies, ate some good food. Okay, yeah. Watched some football, gym. Mm-hmm. It was a regular week. You know, not every week is going to be, you know, we went to such and such and did this and did that. Nah, yeah. I'm in a little bit of a strain. The, the daylight saving shit really fucked me up. Nah, yeah, 100. I absolutely hate it. I they- hate it more than a lot of shit. Nah, daylight savings definitely messed me up. Look, me and Terrell shooting the podcast right now, y'all. It's about six o'clock, but it really does not feel like six. It's been dark for like an hour and a half almost. Yeah. I don't I know if anybody else is impacted by that. I always think about Cali. Y'all are three hours behind. Do y'all still feel the impact of it? Well, yeah. I everybody, guess they would. everybody does that's going through this because you get used to it looking a certain way. And don't some states don't even do this? Mississippi passed. I want to say Kentucky. It's like three or four states. That passed. I honestly kind of got caught off guard because I thought we all passed. I was like, bet, we all ain't got to worry about that shit no more ever again. Damn, yeah. And and so you, we was like, daylight savings tonight, right? I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, okay, yeah. What's that? Yeah, that shit didn't even make That sense. ain't real no more. But I shouldn't even ask you how your weekend was because we're literally going into the next weekend. Don't nobody give a fuck what your weekend was last week. No, I that's not how true. your week was. Oh, right, no bullshit. I had a good week. Good week. Regular week. What about you? I ain't gonna lie, it was a pretty good week. Like I said, like well, like you said, I kind of I'm on the same boat as you. Chill week, didn't do nothing too crazy this week. Um, y'all know how it is, trying to stay productive. We're not in the politics crazy, but we did just have the election pass. Yep. If you're listening to this, uh, shout, shout out to those who used their right to vote. Yep, got out and voted. Shout out to y'all. Uh, for us in our news, Maryland elected the very first black governor in its Westmore history. Mm-hmm. Westmore. Though we've uh, had Larry Hogan for a long time. We had Larry Hogan. Yup. Damn, we did have him for a... Oh, look, this I was thinking of O'Malley. Didn't we have somebody named O'Malley? Martin O'Malley, we had him too. Okay, yeah. Brother? No. Oh, of course not. <laughs> you just had him in the first black. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, shout out to Westmore, man. Uh, believe it or not, it says he grew up in Tacoma Park, Maryland. So no. shout out to him. You know what I'm saying? First brother to, to be a governor for Maryland. But guess what? Being the first black... Really does not mean shit anymore to me. You know what I'm saying? First black is always cool, but that can't be your only accomplishment with this shit. You need to come in and do some real, yeah. real work. First black can't be the best thing you did. Don't run around. Yeah, don't you know run on the first black. See, everybody is cool with the first black thing. Then when it's time to start doing stuff for black folks, then it's well, well, you was you was up there celebrating and retweeting when you was the first black. Now it's time to do stuff for us. That's my thing. And you want to be the everybody guy. We'll take that banner back. You could just be governor. Give us our first black re- award back. But you know what? That's us, though. We need to be the ones to do that. Look, we done seen this rodeo show and did nothing before right. with, with B.O. And look, we done gave we gave Kamala the first black award. What she do with it? She got that shit up in her attic somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> but it's by others. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Hey, Westmore. Welcome to DC. <laughs> we want to see you do some big shit, dog. And look, they just made weed legal in Maryland. If you're 21 up, I'm about to delete that episode. What was it called, <laughs> Terrell? Fuck uh, the clock. I don't know what episode it was. Oh, the upside down. The upside down. Man, they're making weed legal. I ain't gonna lie, Terrell. It got me wanting to spin the block because I can do this shit for real. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm outside the gym with it. <laughs> <laughs> you also have been less annoying since you stopped smoking weed. That's what I just want to tell you. That. That's yeah, like somebody saying you also smell a little bit better since. Well, hold on, wait. I didn't since know since you I started wasn't. taking showers. Sorry, I wasn't annoying when I when I. No, nah, when you, you used to be edgy. You used to be edgy. You used to be never want to. Your your attention span is still fucked. Terrell's attention span is the best. But thing. you, if you try to show Terrence a TikTok that's like three minutes, he's like, I'm not about to sit here and watch this whole thing. It's Can like not? God Everybody damn, nigga. I feel like everybody can relate to that. Somebody but, says, hey, watch this real quick. Imagine somebody being like that. Three minutes ain't 7. real quick. I got to give my whole attention span to this mini movie you trying to show It's me. like, damn, this motherfucker can't watch a TikTok. And you know what? I'm going to tell you about some shit that uh, Lee Jung Jae said from Squid Game. You see what he said about life. 
Not a dude that played 456? Yeah. I'm going to tell you. I got, I got a film segment. We'll get it there. Well, let's, first, let's talk about how you dress like a pack of Marlboros. Let's talk about how, what do you dress like? I don't even know what color this is, boy. Is it a blue or green? I'm confused like shit, boy. I'm thinking about exactly what, I'm thinking about the color wheel like shit looking at this shirt, boy. Is it blue or green? This nigga's got on teal. You look like you work at a bowling alley. You look like you work at the AMF. You look like you, like you, like you, like you, like you, you look like you got a, your own bag. You got your own balls and you have a, a glove. This shirt is low-key too small, y'all. Look at this. I could hawk right out of this. Now. What's the name of the restaurant in Pulp Fiction that they went to? Uh, Jack Rabbit Slims is where you look. You look like Jack Rabbit. You look like a Jack Rabbit. What you look like, boy? The nigga look like a weirdo. Weird boy. What did you, what did you give this from? This nigga got this from Paxson like shit, boy. Mm -hmm. And you thought that it was fresh? This nigga's got on a skater shirt. You look like you was on Rob, uh, Robin Big like shit, boy. You was an extra. You was skating. We didn't even know who you was. <gasps> yeah, you dressed like a soprano. <laughs> Like an Italian. I can't really get nothing off of I'm trying. Gabagoo. <laughs> <laughs> Funny as shit. Mozzarella. That's what you look like. <laughs> this is the Christmas. This is y'all this Christmas uh, preview. I'm giving y'all a little Christmas. You know what I'm saying? The red, uh, the and red green. green, and white. Uh -huh. I've had this in my closet for a minute. I done got too big for it, for real. You know, you just, you know I'm making too many games out here. <laughs> you know how people talk like that? I'm just winning too much. I ain't got time for that. I'm just, Those are people you be like, oh, I bet. I'm looking this way on my set. And you know what they're going to say? You were hating on my success. <laughs> you don't want, you me, don't to want me to be great. <laughs> All right, look, let's start this way. Um, they're actually laying takeoff to rest today at the, um, I forget the name of the arena. I hope it's televised so I can watch it. Yeah. Um, but it might not be. And if not, it's cool. Have his family wants to do it. But this week, man, has been just, it's what, what was most eye-opening about this week is that everybody just, you know, we talked about how we had been through the shit before, whatever. Yeah. But what was eye-opening about this shit to me is the fact that everybody just started living life again. Everybody just went right back to regular schedule, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Drake and them dropped on Friday, and then it just seemed like nothing happened. And it's almost like you get reminded of it every now and then. Like every day, I, was, I tweeted this, but every day, at some point in the day, I'm like, Damn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It could be something I see on TV, music. But, yeah, and I just wanted to say everybody who might be struggling with the takeoff loss, I know my sister personally is struggling with it. Uh, and I don't mean, like, crying all day, but, like, just feel like, man, it, like, this is a heavy a heavy thing. It's, it's totally cool. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's what's supposed that to be That shit happy. is still heavy. Yeah. We're not supposed to really get over it. It might seem like the world is moving past it because, unfortunately... That's kind of what happens. Even people who lose people in real life that ain't take off level, yeah. they get on their social media and just see the world moving. The world keeps spinning. The sun goes up, sun goes down, and then yep. it all happens again. But if you're still kind of dealing with it, it's all right. I always, my advice to people is to not shy away from anything take off related. Yeah. I say consume it all. When Kobe died, when Nipsey died, uh, that's just what I did. Mm -hmm. I, Terrell knows I'll go, I'll go full fledged into it that way when I see stuff I'm not really feeling anything just some advice for some of y'all that might be dealing with it you see Terrence, that freestyle watch it Terrence goes too far I went too far with Kobe 100 and, and Nipsey no you went way further with Nipsey than Kobe Terrence will put on a video and be like this dude has killed so many people and he went to jail this is his story and it's a nigga that has that nothing to do with Nipsey that's sitting there talking about how he's a 8 tray gangster and I'm like why are you watching this that shit was good. Terrell said that because after Nipsey, I started getting into the gang shit. He it started looking at all these different docs. Terrence is weird, though. I swear, if you can sit there and watch a Latrell Spreewell documentary. Think about this, y'all. I, I don't give a damn enough. What he do? Oh, 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 okay. What was my movie suggestion of the week a couple weeks back, y'all? It was the Dream Team, the, the yeah. Redeem Team. Yeah. You think Terrell has seen that documentary? No. Because he just doesn't give a fuck about sports. Just say you don't care about basketball. I'm a football fan. I'm not a big basketball guy. That's true. But I also wouldn't watch. If it came out with a bum-ass Steve Atwater documentary, your bum-ass would be watching. He's, he's not even a great he's safety Super Bowl champion. Sean Taylor. Sean Taylor. Better. Terrence, look, please. In, in, in disrespect. I don't give a damn what y'all say. Steve Atwater was great in coverage as well. So was Sean Taylor. He had more interceptions than Steve Atwater. Terrence, no, he didn't. No, okay, well, we got a ring. How about that? Two of them. Sean Taylor had lived to see it. He, he might have got one. Look, don't open, mouth, open up your mouth about the best. 
I'm gonna shut it for you real <laughs> quick. <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, and one, he was the hard, hardest hitting safety of all time. If you ask me, I'm a Broncos nah, fan. Nah, Sean Taylor. And I'm a real one. A lot of y'all Broncos fans that came with Peyton have no idea what I'm talking about. Oh, that's the guy from Broncos Insider. Yeah, he's also a Super Bowl champion. Played for. You know that if you was a fan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, rest in peace, take off for the people that's still dealing R. with R. it, still, still rolling with it. We all still dealing with it, especially me and Terrell. So mm -hmm. we was literally supposed to do something yesterday, and we just ended up sitting there watching like two or two hours of like just videos. Yeah. Walking like I talk a video, this video, that video. It's crazy. It's awesome. um, but a non complete too soon. Some of y'all that got the struggle beard, the struggle beards. Let me start over. Some of y'all that got the struggle beards, and I mean like you got some scruff on your face. And it's not a long topic, you know what I'm saying? But I just feel like it would be better if you just cut that shit off and just rock the clean face with goatee. You know what I'm saying? Not Look at somebody can. like Kevin Durant with the barely, with the, why not just rock the goatee, bro, with the, with the clean look? It ain't like the little pebble stubble you got is really adding anything to your face. You just look like you haven't had a cut. Some people think it's going to make them look a little older. Nah, fuck that. I'm letting you know right now it don't. You just look a, a little bit more rough. What and I the, guess if that's the look, rock it. But this is what I always said. I wish that I could go a clean face sometimes. But I literally cannot. If I were to cut my beard, y'all, literally I would bump up crazy. It would look stupid. I couldn't go with the clean face. Some of y'all have the, the jawline where you could just get your shit clean or, or grow the... I don't know, man. If you got that short stubble joint, you need to let that joint or go. Or the bro. ladies like it. Ladies, y'all fuck with that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> y'all fuck with that? Who's nah, you, stubble yeah. grow back? He look like grow back. Not for real. Honestly, it took me a long time for my beard to even, like, all the way start connecting. My beard used to stop out here. Nah, yeah. And for a long time, I just used to rock the little chin strap joint. That's what y'all need to run at, the chin strap. It ain't nothing wrong with that. Somebody was cooking somebody with that, though. Yeah, I, I would never that. go back to that. I wouldn't I'm go back never, to that. I'm going to look like this until it, this turns gray. And, you know what I'm saying? And then I might die to keep my youth. Nah, yeah. <laughs> like, the why anybody know who Chris Bouchard is? Why you got that fucking beard? Chris Bouchard got a beard now? Chris Bouchard got a beard. No, he don't. Yes, he does, bro. He got a beard. Who you ain't gonna know who that is. Who's the nigga in the NBA with the perfect haircut all the time? Jalen Rose. He got the goatee, but he got a perfect cut all the time. Nah, but imagine he had some stubble and he was trying to leave the stubble. That's what I'm talking about. Like, yo, bro, if it's not there, it's not there. Yeah, you just got to let it go. And I'm not talking shit because I have a beard. I'm talking like, because my shit not perfectly connected all the way. But I'm just saying, when I didn't have it, I was cutting my shit down. Now I'm, you, I'm giving y'all some advice for real. I'm not getting on you. Look, fuck you, nigga. Fuck you, nigga. I'm keeping my stubble. Next topic. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, Drizzy and 21 Savage finally gave us the uh, project that they had announced, her uh -huh. loss. And that joint was exactly what it was supposed to be. 100%. And more. And more. And let me tell you something. This is one of the best albums to come out this year. And I'm going to tell you why. Drake got men acting in ways I have never seen us act. He got us looking crazy out this joint. I'm going to tell you why. He cracked the code on what to do. If you don't really like Drake, or if, it, if you think it's cool to like, yo, he's a whatever, you're not really a Drake fan, whatever. But listen to what I'm saying. This motherfucker cracked the code on this shit, and I'm going to tell you why. Terrence, think about Am it. Am I dreaming right now? The motherfucker, oh, you hear the sirens? Nah, you said the same thing twice. I only said it once. This motherfucker cracked the code, and I'm going to tell you why. And guess what? Drizzy, he got us acting crazy. He cracked the code. Tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> but look though, the album starts with the the rich flex, right? Yeah. I'm in the gym, right? I'm walking past the, the motherfucking treadmills. It's a nigga on the treadmill, the last one right there, you walk right by. Yeah. You know, he doing the incline 12 through 30. Respect. That's the best shit to do. Um 12 incline on three speed, three speed. for 30 minutes, y'all. Yeah. But um, this man saying, 21, can you do something for me? Do your thing, 21, do your thing. I said, <laughs> this man looking zesty as fuck on the treadmill. <laughs> but then I started thinking, that shit is catchy as fuck. We all singing that shit. 
Nah, yeah. Drake got us out here looking crazy. Didn't think about it. I'm um I'm doing my motherfucking um sitting on the bench, inclined. If you ain't do this, the little curl dumbbell curls, right? Yeah. I said the diamonds they hit like a rainbow. That's because the niggas are Frank Purr. And I said, I just said Purr. Nah, for real. And that's why I said this motherfucker guy's out here looking crazy. By the end of the album, everybody saying, I can't fuck with broke boys. I can't, I can't fuck, fuck with broke boys. boys. Y'all yeah, niggas right. make me sick. This motherfucker cracked the code, because why? Fellas, we all try and get our money up. We all try and get our money. So when he said that, we thought, yeah, I ain't fucking with broke ass, you know. I ain't fucking with you. ain't get no money. We ain't rocking with you. But the ladies receive it a whole different way. Nah, you're right. They running the broke boys because they ain't, they been talking about this for years. This they shit. They been talking about this shit for years and months. Nah, you're right. Motherfucker cracked the code, got us out here looking crazy. Nah, I think you actually raised a good point as to where the music is, is I'm not gonna say ambidextrous. What do you call it? It's fluid, gender fluid. The music is gen gender fluid. Like dead ass. Women can sing the music and men. Damn, you right. Per. The Zesty 21 joint, <laughs> Broke Boys. We are rapping about Broke Boys. I can't talk to Broke Boys. We sound dumb as shit. <laughs> we sound crazy. That's crazy. Wow, that's actually a really good point because you know what? You're right. The women can sing that mm -hmm. shit and we sing it because Drizzy's, Drizzy's our guy. Uh-huh. And think about it. Y'all, you've seen the TikToks and stuff going around where everybody trying to make Drake look zesty on the, uh, it was zesty. On the 21 joint. And it was, but we still spinning that joint though. I ain't gonna lie. When I hear that joint, come on. I'm like, hey, 21. Can you do something for me? When I first heard that, I said, all right. <laughs> I'm going to keep it 100, y'all. The reaction's up on Patreon. I want to give a big shout-out to the Realist Nine for tapping in with us. I feel like the video is great. Uh, what about best? The album was great. That album is the replay. I, I've played that album over six times already. Mm -hmm. That album is slated to do 400K. You're tripping. You actually played that album way more than six times. I, I gave a you humble been number. You've know yeah, you been, you been spending that joint. How he know what I've been doing? Nigga, you always you come home every day and say, I would you listen to Rich Lights again. That don't mean I, I listen, listen to the whole album again. again. I don't miss I listen to it again. You wouldn't let me listen to one try. Don't try to humble your number. Don't also try to gas me either. Like Can't. I'm just listening to nothing but. It's been I got other stuff that I listen to. That album came out Thursday night. It's now again almost Friday. I have listened, I have listened four, six times. Don't gas me. You speak for yourself. Anyway. How many faking they streams? Getting they plays for machines. I can see behind the smoking mirrors. Niggas really. We're not gonna talk about a throne. Look, <laughs> that's a different conversation. Son, he, why were you talking about throne? What are you talking about? See, this is why I'm getting with J. Cole. J. Cole fans. Why y'all still talking about Y'all wonder where J. Cole at? He's at King's Landing. He's sitting on the Iron Throne. Just that's like know. a Bengal fan saying, let's not talk about Super Bowls. <laughs> what about y'all Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> what about it? Anyway, look. They tried to throw the bronze at me. Oh God, Terrence, just keep, let, let's just keep let's just keep talking because you're gonna piss all the J Cole fans off. <laughs> just leave it alone, bro. <laughs> anyway, that album is amazing, bro. I feel like that album has that has crazy replay value for the mm -hmm. people that say I just don't see what's so great about it. I give it to you, but yo, I'm a part of that camp that really bangs with it. I really bang with that album. And you know what I was gonna say? Uh. Jesus, what was I getting ready to say about this album? Look, we, look at us getting off. off I'll uh, throw a wrench at you. Uh, nah. Is that pause? No. Um, I was watching a Dame Dash video and this nigga is crazy. <laughs> nah, Dame Dash is ridiculous. I know. But um, I said I was going to get back to him, pause. And then when I got back to him, pause. Uh, so he threw it back at me, pause. <laughs> <laughs> but um, do you think it's better than Mr. Morale and Big Steppers? That's been a conversation that I've seen. I'm not saying I agree or disagree. Let's keep it 100. We're enjoying this music. But let's not get fucking ridiculous. Are you kidding me? Fuck no. I'll say that. And I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to curse. Fuck no. I'll tell you uh, No. You mean the album that we stopped listening to after the first week? It's what they say. That's bullshit. Y'all stop listening to it. Hello, new world. All the boys and girls. Let's go. I got some new stories to tell. It's kids. Fuck out of here. No, you're right. That I, album is five times better, and I don't care if you heard it once. Mr. Morale and the Big Step is still a better album, y'all. Come on. Conceptually, Drake did his thing. Of what, he did ahead. his thing on this album, but he also he also did some things on this album that I didn't really like. That I'm like, ah, ah. Like you what? Know? Like what? Like what? There's some questionable pieces on this album. So even just from little little shit, like 
Like what he said, the uh the boat rocky on some the boat was ro- was real rocky on some Aaliyah shit. Fuck out of here! I'm not fucking with that. I don't know why I'm not fucking with that. Rock the boat. That the Meg the Stallion this. People uh-huh. say he she he wasn't even talking about Meg. People say he was. He was. But that added a little bit of a, you know what I'm saying? Because mm. when you do look at it in a certain light, it's like, all right, you're already being zesty on this joint. This is kind of look. You on this joint talking about Meg? You call what's her name? Uh, Serena husband a, a, a groupie. Mm-hmm. Okay, He's, Kendrick had Kodak on his album, which was controversial for him. This isn't even a, a lot of people didn't like uh, songs like even though it's an amazing song. A lot of people didn't like um, like some of the interludes. Some people didn't like Worldwide Steppers, which if you don't like Worldwide Steppers, that song is insane for what he says. I'm a killer. Um, He's a killer. She's a killer, killer bitch. bitch. Y'all tripping. Bottom line. Think about people that like vibe when you say that. They gonna be like, look, fuck out of here. <laughs> but that drink is fine. Drizzy took a very villainous approach with this album. Mm-hmm. He didn't give a fuck. He said a lot of shit. The album was great. Mm-hmm. Talking about Miss Moran, Big Step was changes the conversation. You're gonna make me start hating on the album that I love, which is her love. Nah, they can, but they're both good albums. You know what I'm saying? But um, is One it, thing that I did want to say mm-hmm. about this album, it, it, it alludes to something that you was talking about, about he, how he has us out here. What was I? I think I wrote it down. It's just, well, one thing I'll say while you look that up, I was telling Terrence that Drake say stuff that, uh, we go. he say stuff that is, um, like, that throw me off. Like, all of the rappers are wearing a Mary. The Lambo truck is like, yo, if you can get a Lambo truck of yours, that's dope. But if you got some of Mary jeans, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I could feel like 80 racks in my Mary. Wow. Like, little Baby raps about a Mary. Everybody raps about a Mary. And this nigga Drake comes out and says, I never wore Mike and Mary or sat in a year. But I think that that's what puts him in a different lane than a lot of other rappers. That's like, what I'm saying. I'm a diss, diss like, y'all like the niggas that are under me that y'all look to. Because mm-hmm. as a rich guy, how do you brag when you're the richest? That's how the richest brags. Think about it. That's in the same ballpark as Jay-Z. Yep. You want to grand with the money to your head. There's a disconnect. We don't call that money over here. Like, the stuff that y'all actually look at, we really don't even glamorize that. Right. The only nigga that can sun you for real maybe might be a bill. has to be a billionaire. Yeah. And if you don't think Drake's close, close to getting a billion, billion nah, 100. he got to be going to touch it before he's gone. And for look, sure. this one thing that I really wanted to say. I feel like the vibe of this album and some of, and, and the pacing of this album was immaculate. Like, to go from, you go from certain songs to, me and Terrell always talk about that run from, I think it goes from Back Outside Boys to Privileged Rappers, Spin Bout You, Hours in Silence to Treacherous Twins. That, yeah. that run is just lit. I mean, but even after Circle Loco to Pussy and Millions, Broke Boys, Middle of the Ocean... To Jumbotron, the more MJ. And that's the album, basically. The, the album to me is great. This is the main point that I wanted to make, Terrell. The Her Loss, Honestly Nevermind tour would be immaculate. I'm getting tickets to that tour. If he tours with Her Loss and Honestly Nevermind, and you get to go to a tour with a mix of those two albums, bro, that would be a phenomenal that would be dope. concert. I mean, him and 21 can do this album. They can do the Jimmy Cooks. But imagine going from something like... Imagine going from something like Privileged Rappers to Currents. Or something like uh, Hours in Silence that can fade into something from Honestly Never Nah, that would be dope. I feel like that tour would be And I think he should do it with 21. So that way 21 could get out there and, and they can do sneaking. They can do... Knife talk. They oh, can yes. do a, all of the drinks they got together. You know what I'm saying? I think that tour would just be awesome. Falling back on me. <laughs> Don't do that one. Don't Keep do that, that one. one. Let me tell you something, though. Motherfucking, uh... Damn, what's the one that I was thinking about? I forget. No, I'm not brutal. I guess it's... But I keep the fire with the dragon. <laughs> Quavo and them. <laughs> but, uh... I guess it's fuck me is the one that I be singing. Mm-hmm. I've been in the crib like, tell me what did I do wrong? Like, I've been hurt. That joke is crazy. But well, some but of you my know people what? out there that really going through it. If you're not really like a Drake fan, like, I get it. Like, I get, I get it. it. Yeah. I get it. But then again. But, like, you're no, you're, I bet you're real fun at parties. What do you want to hear? Play some, play some. I mean, it's not an artist. I mean, I get it. If you're not a Drizzy fan, I get it. I mean, but come on. Like, 
This is like back in the day when Michael Jackson dropped and you said, man, Thriller was all right. Or, man, his, man, that New York Michael Jackson was whatever. It's like, yo, mm -hmm. you really can't get mad at the world reacting to the biggest artist currently. And I don't know what the final number is going to be, but the original numbers was 315 to 350. And then it came out that it's going to be 400 to 410. But I think that's because people have been spinning the album. Now, yeah. At least personally, and what I've seen on, on Twitter from people talking about it, people are like, yo, I've been playing this joint all week. Now, yeah. I mean, I think it's the layers of it. I can listen to some shit that, it's going, that I can, you know what I'm saying, that, that has energy. I can listen to some shit that's laid back. Yeah. Even 21 doing this thing on 3 a.m. in Glenwood. Like, there's a lot of vibes that you can catch on this joint. Spin Bout You is a specific vibe. Uh, Circo Loco, specific vibe. Broke Boys, specific mm -hmm. vibe. And I think that's the best thing uh, about the album is the diversity. Damn, this joint fucking up. I that joint getting ready to start peeling off. Like, when you put a... Uh, it's about to start peeling like it looks like foil. Do this, bud. He got on a shirt made of um your chest itching like shit under that shirt, ain't it? No. This joint giving is it's no, giving very not. much thrift. Nah, see this joint. I'm not I'm trying to be on some some beach vibes, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You look like a Dominican baseball player. What do you look like, boy? <laughs> you look like you work at a pool. All right. Stop that running. Yeah. <laughs> Verizon hit me for five hundred dollars i woke up uh yesterday morning nah i woke up wednesday nah sorry y'all i woke up tuesday and that motherfucker said first off i'm keeping a hundred i'm letting y'all in my motherfucking life it's life too right joint says seven hundred dollars past due amount of five hundred dollars and they said if you don't pay the past due amount by the eighth you will be suspended, which was Tuesday. Which was that current day. So I said, damn, we not about to have no motherfucking Wi-Fi if I don't come up with $500. I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. Y'all see how Drizzy said, I never wore Micah Mary's or was in it or drove a Yaris? Me neither. And it wasn't by choice. <laughs> I can't afford it yet. So that hurt me pretty bad. I need to know. I need to talk to Verizon. That's about to tell Terrell. Verizon smacked me over my head with that 500 and I can't even really be mad at it because I just like forgot about it. I keep telling them put it on auto pay. You can't call and say, what the f is going on? What that is going on my bill? And they say, well, you haven't paid. Look, they got all the offense. When's the last time you paid it? Well, that's a pass due. This is a pass due. Yeah, you going to 200 yeah. something dollars worth of pass due? You just got to call and be wrong and raise hell. I hope they just get irritated with you and just give you what you want. I'm hurting y'all. So look, we started up a GoFundMe. <laughs> Help me pay my Verizon bill, and I swear I got every one of y'all donations back <laughs> tenfold. That's <laughs> funny as shit, but you're good. Post a GoFundMe, nobody, nobody uh, post nothing. Really? <laughs> Damn, I thought y'all fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. But yeah, Damn, I keep telling Terrence put it on auto pay. Adulting is when you start really putting shit on auto pay because you know you're gonna pay it. There are certain bills you don't put on auto pay. But then there are certain bills that you just go, you know what? I'm going to put this joint on auto pay. Fuck it. I told her it's certain things that I will put on auto pay and it's certain things that I just I just don't feel right in my heart doing that. Like, I just be like, all right, I'll this give you This motherfucker, Alec, he getting ready to have to make a life decision. I'm like J. Cole and them school loans when it comes to that Verizon bill and the AT&T joint. I be at the gym and I, all of a sudden my music not playing. I said, damn, hold up. AT&T done cut out shit off. And y'all think me and Terrell don't still go through that real life Chance, shit? Don't make it seem like we be struggling to pay. You be forgetting to hit submit. I'm not saying we the struggle money. to pay. I'm just saying we go through the same thing, you know? Nah, we need to put them shits on auto pay. I'm tired of going through that. He's not going through it because he's not paying. Who not paying? You not. I'm not hitting the button. I'm hitting the buttons I'm supposed to hit. Am I'm I hitting the buttons I'm supposed to hit. <laughs> you can hit the buttons you're supposed to hit. That, that motherfucker at AT&T cut off. I'm like, damn, I hope Terrell not out no way because he about to be hot. I can't. I can't reach. I can't reach. <laughs> Terrence treat me like a supervisor sometimes. It's all good. He ain't, look, he ain't going to know. Hey, did you hear about Cash App? No, I did not. Cash App's cash flow. This is just a random ass tech corner. You got a tech corner? No. All right, bet. I mean, there's Twitter shit, but like, since like he's going to neglect y'all, I got you. Don't worry about it. Cash apps, cash flow um, is at $52 billion for Q3. That means how much money going through the app? That means they went, yeah, they, they processed $53 billion, which is up 19% um, from last year. And it's 
and it's because people are you more than ever people are using them for as a reliable means for like direct deposit the cash app card mm -hmm. and it's getting to the point where they're getting ready to be like recommend they're, they're trying to get to like recommended level for like you know setting up your direct deposit and shit like that i thought that was dope the motherfuckers that who do we know that's that invested in cash app early ah i don't know but yeah, okay, so that's dope. But but my my question is is about like the taxes and all of that. You know, they introduced a new thing that I think a lot of us are gonna be surprised with next year, with the taxes. Oh, were they gonna tax you based on if like you? I think didn't if, if you receive a certain amount. Yeah, but it's not as just ba it's not as basic as that. And people don't have their businesses set up the the right way. But if you have a if you have a cash app card that's tied to a business, you'll be taxed. Man, I they heard they can't just tax you. Terrell, I heard if you accept a certain amount of money, most businesses don't have their cash app directly tied in. They just say, "Well, you know what? Cash app me forty dollars, and I'm gonna do it." But if you make over a certain amount, Terrell, if but somebody they, sends you over a certain amount, you're getting taxed. You might be right, but my question is, how the fuck do they know because that your you family have, not just sending you money on some? You know what I'm saying? That's why I said we about to all get smacked. They said, oh, yeah, just wait. Because guess what we all hit? Scroll, scroll, scroll. Okay, agree to terms. <laughs> New terms? Bet. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Okay, thanks. Bye. No bullshit. Got his ass. You're going to get a 1099 at the end of the year. Yeah, we need that $85. 80 It's going to be 300 $400. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but that's the thing. Depending on how much you make, I feel like everybody, the only reason why I said 85 because I feel like we're going to get a little number like that where they say, yo, you got taxes that need to come from this app you got. What app? Cash app. We're going to see. Uh -huh. People are going to be like, what are you talking about? What are they talking about? Okay. Yeah. You best to stick with it. You better take something from that cash you got <laughs> over there. Hey, I did want to ask you about this tweet I saw. Um, did you see the girl that was like, I forget what she said. I forget Shorty's name. Um, this nigga got pics in, the, pics in the mirror. Swole. Too much. Look, too much respect. All of my Shorty BDs, they know not to try it. Too much respect. I used to handle CDs before they were buy. Hey, look. My ex was a great man. This is what she said. I want to get your, get your thoughts on this. Yeah. She said, my ex was a great man, but a horrible boyfriend. That's how I knew I was different. He never told me no, and I still left. Bills was paid in advance. Flew me first class everywhere. Courtside seats for the season. Nigga was in the NBA. Uh, shopping every day, damn near, and I still left. And who is that? Right? Oh, Megan James. Megan James. She's from uh, Chick from Bad Girls Club. Yeah. Anyway, the comments was all kind of like mixed. It was people saying, sounds to me like you the issue. It sounds like you had everything you needed. That's crazy. Bills pay, shop every day. Mm -hmm. uh, court size seats, first class. You good. But when people asked her, like, what was the issue? She said, um, what made him a bad boyfriend? Because she said he was a good Great dude, man. bad boyfriend. And her answer was that he was a bad communicator. Okay. He wasn't very affectionate. And she just started feeling like he didn't like her for real. Damn. I only bring this whole shit up to say that the Instagram expectations, fellas, that a lot of the Instagram expectations of a man has to have this and that and that and that. The reason why I don't allow myself to get so worked up over a lot of it is because most of it be just fluff. A lot of it. Now, yeah. A lot of these girls... Are liking that stuff on Twitter because it's nice, but it's not realistic. Meaning you don't really need to have all of that stuff to get and make a girl happy. Right. This is a prime example of how all of those Twitter tropes were there. Mm -hmm. And the reason she left was still the basic boyfriend shit. Nah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? There's a somebody had quoted this one with the Carlos Miller video where he was like, uh, you could be doing nine out of ten things that that girl want. And, and she'll still leave you for the nigga that listens, that does mm -hmm. the one thing, which is listen. Yeah. Which, that's why I said, you know what? Nah, you're right. 100%. A lot of the shit that we see is so, it, it, it's real. But a lot of these girls out here, bro, they don't really give a fuck about that. This is a, this is a clear-cut example. Nah, yeah, and there's a, lot of layers, there's a lot of layers to that, too. Like, she said he was a great dude. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And he had all of that stuff. And she felt like she still left because she said, what? He couldn't communicate. He was a bad communicator. He wasn't affectionate. Mm -hmm. So she started feeling like he didn't like... She said, I started feeling like he didn't really like me for real. Overthinking. Go ahead. Um, but that's it. Bad communicator. Not affectionate. 
Felt like he didn't like me. I felt like I don't know. She could have she could have low key dead ass dropped the ball with that too, fellas. I'm 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 I'm, I'm a Throw the cape on for the fellas real quick just a one time. Mm-hmm. Because you never know. Like, girls will get everything that they asking for. And I felt like for her, I think you understand now that, especially somebody there's, like there's her. There's a learning lesson for you, too, where it's like, yo, like, she probably got with dude and thought, yo, this is getting ready to be great. And it could have turned out that she just probably, she might have, not saying probably, it could have been a situation where she might not have really liked him. Once she realized that, okay, money's cool. All the things that I was looking for was cool. It's like, for real, for real, you really have to like the person that you with. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, yeah. Not saying that she didn't really like him or, or vice versa, but if they weren't a match, like, as humans, mm-hmm. all of the material shit that you think you bring to the table, the situation being perfect, it really don't matter. That's actually true. You know what I'm saying? Because him not being a good communicator, him not really being affectionate, all of that shit was cool in the beginning. Like, it, was, it wasn't really a thing in the beginning until the material shit started feeling like it was routine. Probably and then yeah. you start feeling like he didn't really like you. And I get that too, though. It's and I'm not just going to say that my man is a bad communicator because low-key, he could have had a different communication method than her. And one thing I know about women, your girl could want you to communicate her way, and if you don't, she will deem you a bad communicator. When low-key... I don't think that that's always the case. I will admit that it may be a majority case because, fellas, our communication be up in the air. However, mm-hmm. one thing I also know is sometimes people will want their communication method to be the main method. And if you can't communicate with them, it's not, damn, we're not on the same page. It's, you're a bad communicator, and I need to find somebody that communicates better than me. And as long as you have that mindset, or I need to find a com- oh, let me sorry, let me, say, let me say this again. It's not that they'll say that you're a bad communicator and they need to find a better communicator. They want to find somebody that will communicate the same as them. Mm -hmm. However, I think going into a relationship, you have to understand that you're going to communicate one way and they're going to communicate another way. And Loki is about getting on the same page and finding like that middle ground. Yeah, understanding how each other communicate. Because everybody processes shit different. That is true. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to let her say, bro, I was a bad communicator. Because well, Loki, we don't know about him. He could have said, need a little bit more. she wanted me to call her before and after and, and this and this and that. And I couldn't keep mm-hmm. up with it. And then do that you understand? That doesn't mean he's a bad communicator. True. And then do you understand what you're getting into with a, you know what you're getting into when you're dating a, uh, a NBA player that's always on the road. Yeah. You got to fly first class everywhere. You're getting courtside. You're getting all of the money, the money and shit. Yeah. But we can't cap too much for him. At the, the NBA. That's true. Because at the same huh. time. If you're not really, and like she said, bro, I wasn't really affectionate. If your love language is lo- what physical touch, quality time, nah, then yeah. it ain't gonna work for you. But you don't gotta have money for that. Nah, yeah, you're right. But you bring up a good point because it is kind of two ways to look at it. It's kind of like I looked at it like, see, all that material shit didn't even really mean anything. Yeah. Because the regular boyfriend shit, you didn't want it. I don't know how many regular dudes that was full of nothing but affection, good communication, and I like you for real, she might have turned down because they didn't have the first class money, uh, shopping sprees and shit. Because that's, that's what kept you for a little while yeah. before you realize, I don't think this nigga really liked me. Right. I wonder if she'll adjust her, her uh, you know what I'm saying, what she's looking for because are you really about to get out here and say you about to get a, you want to you do that's going to be you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Have all of the, the rags and riches, but he has to be a good communicator, affectionate, all of this stuff. It's like, yo, you trying to build something that might just like be impossible. But no, nah, that's not true. See, I'm not going to do that because it does exist. It's just not going to be as perfect as you want. Man, we was talking about. That's what I'm saying. Like, low key, people be wanting. You can't want somebody that's in the NFL. Well, I'm not going to say that because maybe you are. Maybe you can't. It, but this is the thing. Like, you getting ready to say the right thing. The whole the, the perfect situation don't always exist. Niggas be wanting a girl. Like, think about it. I'll, I'll put it back on us. On us, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that way we can kind of understand it. And keep the ladies off our backs. Um, but as a man, if you said, I want a girl that watch football with me on Sunday, is fine as shit, cooks it clean, watch anime too, does this and that, it's like freaky in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lady in the sheets. I mean, lady in the streets, but a freak in the sheets. Yep. Yeah. Do- look, don't go to the club. It's kind of like, that's a lot. 
and and one of the things that we gotta realize, especially in the Instagram age, we see these joints on the uh, on the TL on the Explore page, and we start thinking, "Bet I'm about to go and get something like that." Yeah. But that sh- that picture, that don't say what the that experience is not what you mm-hmm. and you would let go of certain shit, but you won't let go of the shit that she didn't like. You won't let go of communication errors. You won't let go of affection errors and incompatibility with those two. You ain't gonna let those go. If this person doesn't buy you shit, most people. Don't really give a fuck. Normally, before you got with that person, you was buying your own shit. Cooking, cleaning. Mm-hmm. And you know what? In her situation, what dude, what she said, dude wasn't affectionate. Let's say he wasn't really affectionate. Let's say he wasn't a good communicator, but he bought he bought you all that stuff. Yeah, fuck that. That means, right. But that means he felt like, I'm going to get the pussy. I'm going to be able to do this and that. All I got to do is give her my car and I let her go buy shit. Yeah, you So he right, really yeah, might yeah. not really like you that way. But that's what was presented to him as the opportunity. That's how he looked at you. Yeah. So you got to kind of just like think about that too. Now nah, you yeah. got to think about that. Like, all right, I got, and right for her, forget, for just like getting out of it. Nah, yeah. But I do think, like you said, that's definitely the, 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 it's two lessons in that for both of them versus like, even if he really wanted shorty, like, yo, you're not going to keep her with the material stick. You shit, you mm-hmm. got to do other shit. And with her, you know what I'm saying? I would say, you know, identifying what you really want. Yeah. Because you're right. That, I mean, that definitely is like a little Instagram situation. Like, and we all on the outside looking in. Think about it. You had women in your past that a nigga will see on Instagram and be like, you used to talk to her? You'd be like, yeah. They'd be like, and you stop? You a fucking idiot. You a fucking idiot. Because yep. all they see is this picture. Mm-hmm. But what you see is nothing but trauma. All the shit that you might have been through. Yeah. Yes. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So you really don't ever really know, but you got to learn the lesson that you get out of everything. I feel like I had something that was like that, but not really like that. It's kind of in the same bracket. A guy took me on a movie date. He wanted to get snacks before we went. Mm-hmm. He pulled into the Dollar Tree, and I called an Uber home while he was in there, right? Mm-hmm. And that raised a conversation that I feel like Let's keep it a hundo. You ask a girl on a date to the movies. Uh-huh. Me and you might disagree on this. You ask a girl on a date to the movies. You need to understand what you look like in this situation. Because low-key, was this girl wrong? Everybody in the comments is saying she missed out on a good man. She could have missed out on, on her love of her life and stuff like that. Because she wanted to be... Because they were saying... You think bro you tried have... to act like he was cheap when really he was smart. That's what people are saying. Uh-huh. I don't think that that was smart. Hold on, wait. Let's just put this on the table first. Yep. Number one, I don't even think that really happened to Shorty. I really feel like she's living on a Twitter space where she's trying to get retweets and likes. Nah, 100%. Yeah, I saw Conceited's comment. I don't think... Is that what he said? That's what Conceited put in the comments. He said, this probably didn't even happen. She just probably did this for Twitter. Yeah. Oh, well, that's what I think. Yeah. That's what I think. But so. I'm just talking Shout about the conversation. conversation uh, let's, about, let's bring it to life. Right. Yeah. You think that bro was wrong for stopping the Dollar Tree. 100. 100. All right, well, let me ask you this. You seen the candy selection that they got at the movies, right? Mm-hmm. They got the little, um, they got a little selection. Mm-hmm. Do they have any, like, chips or anything like that? Not really. You get they popcorn or they expensive ass nachos or whatever they got. Mm-hmm. But that Dollar Tree candy selection, yeah. snack selection, I can get some roasted almonds. Roasted sweetened almonds that I can't get those nowhere else. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't think it's anything wrong with that, but I do think you should probably communicate like, yo, as opposed to getting snacks in the movies, <laughs> we better pull into this Dollar Tree right here and just get snacks here. No. No. Well, first of all, I, <laughs> see, I'm a little too, bo- I'm too bougie for that now. No, you, no, you should. In my, you younger, it <laughs> in my uh-huh. younger days, I might have done that. And guess what? She would have walked. I don't blame her for... for, for you call it an Uber. So now you're going to go home and what? It was people that was like, them, that Uber costs more than them snacks. Your Uber home costs more than the Facts. snacks. Spitting. Hundred Spittin'. emoji. Hundred emoji. Yeah. Fire fire emoji. But I'm going to keep it a hundred with y'all. Fellas, this is where we got to get out our own way, dog. And y'all know I'm going to keep it real with y'all. That's not a good look. Because keep it a hundred. She said a guy asked her out on a date. So now let's put this into play. First date. That's not something you do on a first date. The first time you take a shorty out, you should not be going to the Dollar Tree to get, a, to get snacks. Because let's keep it a hundo. This is where we make a lot of mistakes, fellas. 
we go to second base with a girl that we haven't even got to first base with. And I'm not talking about sexually. I'm talking about in the dating stage. Yeah, you too. We love love. to rush to to second and third base. We love to treat girls that we don't even have a relationship built with like we've been in a relationship. A.K.A. a situation like this. You getting ready to take this girl out for the first time and you got her waiting outside the Dollar Tree while you go in and get snacks? It's not the best look. And look, you're going to come out. And let's keep it a hundo. You're going to come out. And how are we sneaking these snacks in? Whose job is that normally in a relationship? But the girl put it in her the bag. Yeah. So now you're going to have the girl that you just met commit a crime. It's like, nah, I'm not a crime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you asked and heard of hide <laughs> the snacks. You got to first off, I'm not going to act like that never happens before. Some girls can respect the fact that you being humble. Uh, a you, lot you know that you can see. A lot of people can respect that. However, on a first date, it ain't the best look. It's not a good look, fellas. And it's the rush to second base. This is why I said another thing is you see dudes meet girls and they all and they quick to say shit like, you just meet a girl and she say, I'm about to get in the shower. And you saying shit like, without me. Yeah. Bro, chill. Like you're on you're on your way to first base. You you bunting too. You bunt. <laughs> you barely have a shot at first. Some of y'all are sprinting to first. Get and to the first, first baseman first. is already the like the first base easy doing talk. the easy shuffle. <laughs> I got him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or like, you just gotta take your time. Even for my fellas that say stuff like, "Yo, when we going chill? When we going? Yo, when are you gonna make a move that will lead to that?" Mm-hmm. So my it's only my advice from this situation. He preaching today. Only my only advice in this situation. Stop rushing to second base, fellas. Stop talking to these girls like they're your girl before they even your girl. Make sure you secure that before you start talking dumb. Because that's the easiest way for you to get clipped. I guarantee most of ni- most niggas get scratched off the list because you're trying to do too much too soon. This is mm-hmm. an example. I'm not pulling up to no Dollar Tree. Fellas, if you're going to take your girl to an amusement park, that's like saying we're going to stop had to pop out before and eat before because that amusement pop food is too damn. <laughs> nah, <laughs> you need to go in there and prepare. You should be prepared, prepared to, to take. Spend. If you uh-huh. take a girl to the movies, you better have the money ready for some popcorn. Mm-hmm. First of all, popcorn is eight dollars. I'm a, I'm way too bougie, but my girl would never let me sit up here and say, no, nah, the snacks we should definitely the highfalutin ass uh movie theaters we be going to. You should 100. percent I'm not even taking. I would. I'm just at a point in my life. I'm 28. Um. I'm not taking nobody to the regular AMC no more. Like, if it's a date, me and my girl can go to a regular AMC now because we together. But if I was courting somebody, you with me on this. I if would you never courting take, somebody, okay. it looked better to take the trip to the iPick or to the nicer joint or just go to the AMC Prime where they have the actual food and it's not just popcorn. If y'all going to do that. And you, you can get a margarita or a tequila sunrise. Why you watch the movie versus the regular theater experience. And Terrence, if you're 28-year-old ass, I'm calling you out. If you're 28-year-old ass, think you can still go on a, a regular date? Nah, yeah. Like, if you still think that at 28 you can court somebody and you're going to go to the regular, nah, bro, you need to actually try and step this shit up or just don't go to the movies. And my response to that, you should never be courting a girl to the movies. A movie, The movies is almost like what a, the movies to me is cheesecake. You know what I'm saying? What's wrong with cheesecake? It's after the entree. You would never say, I'm getting ready to take you out tonight, girl. And the first thing we're going to get is some cheesecake. <laughs> hey, can we get an a, a entree, a, dish, a dinner first? Let me tell y'all, fellas, please do not do what he is talking about. If you and your girl really wanted to see this Black Panther uh, Wakanda. Right. Oh, I need right? to get my tickets. Oh, I'm fucked. I'm screwed. <laughs> Look, now you got to see it on the second day. <laughs> it's not going to be sold out. You can get tickets. This ain't Did you see game? how this shit went the last time? That was when Chadwick was in it. All right, Peter, that brother, but I don't think he's in this one. Damn, okay, they got a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. You B-A-N. Why you think? Them niggas gonna go to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Give them a 94. <laughs> I feel like it's a, co- a coalition with that. But look, you should not be courting a girl to the movies. You should never be asking a girl out to the movies. The movies should be something that you do after the actual date. You should not be getting a mojito sunrise or a tequila, tequila sunrise. sunrise at the movie theater. 
First of all, I don't want to go to a movie theater where I'm ordering food and what the waiter gonna come in between the food. Nah, look, this is my thing. I'm not against it, but I that a, is second base shit. I hate a privileged rapper that don't even know what it take. First of all, niggas be full of excuses, <laughs> acting like taking their time. <laughs> nah, but this is what I'll say. These girls, you be on the phone with them, and they say, you know what's coming out this weekend? That new Halloween. Okay. Or some shit like that. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Or so, or, so your response to that. Uh, go ahead and tell your actions. I'm gonna say mine. It. I'm gonna get we should us, go see it. I'm gonna right. get us tickets to see that joint. Bad. But what I'm gonna do? Okay. We gonna get something to eat first. Nah. And then we gonna go and get something at the theater. Okay. Now you know what? See, I thought we was on different pa different pages with that because oh, that's wow. my that's my advice. I don't think that it's nothing wrong because you tried to shit on a regular AMC. I don't think it's nothing wrong with going to the regular AMC if that's the movie theater that we went to because it was right by where we okay, went. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's after, then yes. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You know what I'm saying? Let's say you take a girl to the Italian restaurant, you know what I'm saying? And then y'all get y'all food, y'all eat. AMC's right there. Yo, I got our tickets for the AMC. Wow. Some of y'all are trying to make the date out of the movie theater. And... I've said this before, but say it again. You should never take a girl to, especially a girl you don't know. Don't waste your time going to the movie theater. I did that so early in my youth. And what you find yourself doing is trying to get to know her on the way to the movie theater. So you better mm -hmm. hope it's a minute away because it is always that awkwardness. Y'all might be talking before the movie. Y'all might be talking. But Terrence, this is something that niggas should know already. If I you hope. There should be nobody that's still doing a movie at the first date. I don't think any women would but agree to you made me think, and maybe some of them think that, oh, I'm supposed to take her to the eye pick. If y'all going to key, you don't have to go to a fucking eye pick. That's but if y'all going second to base a, shit to me, that's first base. Second base is fucking you. Know, I'm not driving all the way out Bethesda <laughs> taking you to the eye pick for the first date you do. For the first date, second hell no, nah, Terrell. Second base, where you, when y'all chilling, it's like, look, let's just ride over Brandywine to the escape. Nah, fuck that, John. You never do that. With the kids running love. around at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Them niggas down there fighting. You yeah. can see they shadows. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, no, for real. Is. All right, bet. So we, we on the same page with that. But we on the same page. The, nothing wrong with my bro getting the uh, snacks from the yeah. Dollar Tree. And hey, you shouldn't be expecting you your girl to do nothing in the movies if you don't know her. That's another thing. I've been on a date. I went on a date with this movie with this uh, girl to the movies. We went and saw this movie called Ex Machina. I'll never forget it. It was this ghetto ass girl too. I'm not gonna lie. Why she had to be ghetto? Cause she was ghetto. Why? She was ghetto as hell. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not capping. That was the most gutter joint that I ever talked to. I have never seen her ever again since since we stopped our Lord shit. I think she got a baby now. Bottom line, but look, I ain't gonna lie. Me and that joint, I took that joint to like the back of the... You had the Honda? I had the Honda. That was the joint that I had. Look, that's the joint. We was over at the elementary school. I used to put the sunroof back. You told that story on Hippie 4. Yeah, <laughs> look, that same girl, y'all put the sunroof back. She was on top of me. And the feds came. She was acting all nervous and shit. I'm like, damn, you tripping like shit. You supposed to be gutter. Anyway, <laughs> we, went to the ex we went to see the movie Ex Machina. And Great movie. That's a fucking brilliant movie. And look, people th love that, that movie. The fuck, that part. The movie was good as hell. She had her hand on my stomach, right? And I just, I'm showing y'all if you're looking on the visual podcast, but her hand was going lower and lower, right, on my stomach. She started from about my chest. She got to about above my belly button. Then she got to my belly button. Then she got to the waistband. And she got to my belt. And I said, What's she about to do? <laughs> <laughs> Is she about to do what I think she about to do? And she would look, she would go up back to my belly button, but then she would get right back down on my buckle. I said, slip the pinky under the uh, brief, uh, lead, brief lid, slip the, she nah, slipped the she pinky ain't go under that there. Cray. She ain't go that cray, cause then I would have known, but like, <laughs> bro, I'm enjoying the fuck out of the movie. You gotta do. <laughs> you I'm enjoying the hell out of the movie, cause the movie was good, but uh -huh. I'm like, is she about to do this right now? And look, I ain't gonna lie, I was young. If I was a little bit older, I'd have been a little bit more direct. Uh -huh. I can't lie. Back then, I was uh -huh. nervous. I said, she about to get crazy in this movie theater. And look, I, had, I hadn't experienced something like that. All I'm going to say is, I also felt like this our first for real date. That was the first time we ever went out anywhere. So I said, she not about to get like this one on the first date. And I don't want to expect that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I ended up finding out after that she was pissed off that I didn't. 
get get freaky in a movie theater where I didn't even look at her, you didn't even touch me and stuff like that. And I'm like, yo, I'm watching this God, motherfucking damn. movie. I'm not even thinking about Did that. Did you not know that this robot is getting ready to take over the whole planet? Do you not know what she was going on? She didn't <laughs> give a fuck. Do you know she fell asleep in that movie? And you Man, know what? Chance, that's an L. Yeah, she didn't fuck with me. I'm not going to lie. And I ain't going to lie. I'll, I'll take that L. But for the most part. You had to wake her up and be like, movie's over. Nah, her, her bum ass woke up. But this the thing. You a bird like shit. You a bird like shit. And you're not about to fuck up and give me trauma. Because look, let's say I did take it to that level with you. This shit wasn't going to work out. Meanwhile, I'd be going to the movies, whatever joints, thinking that that was the, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Nah, you tripping. I could, I get me out. Whatever. I mean, whatever. We we end up having a, you know, no movie suggestion in a week. But Ex Machina is on HBO Max. Oscar Isaac. My Man, boy. that's a good one. Ex Machina. It's a good one, but it's really not that great. I'm sorry. I love Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac is like one of my favorite at new new of this time actors. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My guy Oscar Isaac. But. Ex Machina was cool, but the, the ending blew me. That's, That's all I'm going to say. Ex Machina was great. You look like Ex Machina. You look like Ex Latina. You look like, you drive, a, you look like you drive a Mach E, boy. <laughs> this nigga was proud as hell he don't have to pay for gas. <laughs> I ain't paying for gas, but got a high-ass car now. Fuck and out I, of here. <laughs> hatchback Mustang. $1,500 a month, but I'm saving on gas. I did the math. Nah, you spending the same money. <laughs> He's still waiting in line. Damn, they ain't got no more pumps. <laughs> Look, everybody plugged in. Sorry. <laughs> I guess you got to wait. You ever try to put air in your tires? a long ass line? <laughs> Damn, I thought this was going to be quick. <laughs> that pressure when you, when you next. <laughs> and if your battery die, you got to wait. Uh-huh. That's the How long thing. is he going to sit there? <laughs> hey, look, I got TV shit, though. We okay. were talking about, um, if you've been talking about this shit, with um I got a couple things for TV. Number mm -hmm. one, the trailer for Darren Aronofsky's The Whale starring uh Brendan Fraser. Yes. The I trailer see just it. came out. If you're not familiar with Darren Aronofsky, Requiem for a Dream, motherfucking Black Swan. Yes, man. Uh, He's a dog. I hope I didn't just get that wrong. Aronofsky, hey, one of my favorite joints that he just did was Mother with Jennifer Lawrence. Yes. Come on, man. That man is a that man, he's coming with, with heat. He's actually sick as fuck. Yeah, he's actually like out. So, um, but, oh, I can't wait. The Whale is the joint starring um, Brendan Fraser, who is a Oscar front runner this year. And for that movie? For that movie, bro. He's the front runner, and everybody wants him to win, because, you know, he ain't had a ups and downs. His fan base is loyal, whatever. Um, but the trailer for that joint just came out. comes out December the 9th. Okay. I'm listening to you. Nine day. Um, okay. It's, it, currently, it's the night right now. We're recording this on Wednesday. Shout out, Turn Up Realist 9. Absolutely. This is also just some random film shit. Causeway, which is the Jennifer Lawrence, uh, Brian David Tyree, favorite yes. boy movie. Mm -hmm. That came out a couple days ago on Apple TV Plus, which I'm, I'm about to, to get, I'm about to get Apple TV because so I much shit comes up. I still haven't seen the Denzel Washington Macbeth joint. <laughs> that shit is getting ready to be hard of hell to watch, he said. <laughs> something, something about the blood of thine. He said the blood of thine. I said thine. Oh, and then also this came out, your girl... Um, the, the front runner for Oscar Gold is your girl, Michelle uh, Yeo, for Everything, Everywhere, All at Man, Once. Man, she She's up it. against Viola for Woman King, they said, maybe. Man. She's up against Shorty that was the that played Mammy Till. And she's up against a couple other people. But honestly, to me, she smoked that role. And she's older, man. I seen Michelle Yeo in a movie called Easy Money. It's one of my favorite movies. It, it, it's literally called Easy Money, translated in America. I don't even know what the real title is. <laughs> But it's called Easy Money. That was the first time I ever seen Michelle Yeoh. And she was fine as hell. I said, damn, she fine as hell. This movie came mm -hmm. out in what, 90s? And look, 30 years later, She's on screen to be doing that. Mm -hmm. And that movie was, to me, one of the best movies of the year. Nah, for sure. Uh, I'm telling you, bro, that movie, all good on the Western front. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a front runner. That's going to be, bro, that movie, the, the performances in that movie, I said, wow, I feel like I'm watching, like, remember, when, what was that movie, 1912? Remember that movie took over? It was the one shot movie. Oh yeah, um, and, and everybody was talking about the acclaim of that movie. I think it was called 1912. That Roger, movie. Roger Deakins. Um, yeah. What was the name of that movie? 1917. Oh, 1917. Sorry, y'all. But yep. I feel like we're all gonna Western Front is gonna be up there too. But man, you know what? And that was Sam Mendes too. Dope. Apple TV Plus. Plus. I'm telling you, it's a lot I of good content you. on that joint. Um, and we have it. I pay for that shit every month. You don't have Apple TV Plus. So, real, I'm getting charged for some shit. And yes, I do. Because remember, I was watching The Morning Show. 
Oh, no, yeah, you I were. signed up for a trial. Did I ever turn that shit off? No. You know how many times a week? You need to get true bill. <laughs> no, nah, no bullshit. You know how many times a month I uh I get a notification that says, thank you for your Apple purchase. It'll be like Apple, Apple, Apple. I'm like, damn, how that many? That shit blows me every time. I got so many things that we pay Apple for. I'm paying for the Adobe suite. And they ain't updating that new iPhone 14. Where's my money going? Because I know <laughs> I ain't the only one. Now, nah, let me tell you this, though. Lee Jung Jae said something that was super important. And uh, if you don't know who Lee Jung Jae is, he's a dude that played 456 on Squid Game. One of the best shows of the year. So Snub look, I'm going to read this. Snub this at the said. Emmys. He said, they asked him about, you know, the show's success ahead of their second season because they're getting ready to do a second season. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm happy about it, but it's bittersweet. And they were like, what do you mean? And so he said, it's great that audiences are consuming Korean content around the world, and I appreciate it. And it's good to see that they appreciate it. But if you think about the themes of Squid Game, how far are we willing to go to accumulate personal wealth? The lengths people are forced to go to. The fact that it resonated with so many people is wor is worrying. Mm. Like that's the so basically what he's saying is the theme of Squid Game is how far will you go to accumulate your own personal wealth? Will you kill this person? Oh, okay. And he yeah. said the fact that the world resonated with that so much is. A little concerning. This nigga just did so much to find that. But uh, look, he said... Didn't do much at all. Listen to this. He, he said, we had to express the experiences of these characters being pushed to those extremes. I'm sorry, extremes. Yeah. Doing that, it was terrible. The more beautiful the game set was, the more childish and fun it seemed, but the more horrific it was for the characters and therefore for us. Okay. And so, he said it changed the way... Look. It made me think about what I'm not doing in life. It made me look at the world way different. Yeah. And that shit made me think, damn, you know what? We just talked about the social media shit and how certain shit isn't real and how expectations can be one thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The way we fucked with Squid Game, it is a little sick, ain't it? I mean. And I'm asking you because you really fucked with it. I think the best thing about Squid Game was the realism of taking simple childhood games and little small simple situations where those decisions normally didn't mean so much, but they put your life behind it. That's like me and you playing rock, paper, scissors, and if one of us lose, then they die. That I mean, it just makes simple decisions that we had to make or that we might have made as fun or games like Red Light, like Green Light, or Tag, or something like that, where you'd simply just be out. Now you're out of life from that same scenario because we could all relate to playing Red Light, like Green Light. We could all relate to being in little arts and crafts situations or competitions in school. No matter if they were the games in Squid Game, we could relate to a simple, if I do this, I win. If I lose, I'm just simply out. Mm -hmm. But to see it put on a scale of, if you do this, you win, and then you add money into it, and then you add a situation where these people made hard decisions in life, people have all, we can relate to needing money. We can relate to making bad decisions that put us in a state of depression and being down. I think he does have a good point on the fact that those experiences weren't to be enjoyed in a way where some people were, in, I guess, in a sadistic way. Mm -hmm. But also, I think, Squid Game popped because of, you know what I'm saying, the re the relatability of that, but not having to us living on our own. I think that's some of the best things about certain movies that have violence and bad situations. The reason why everybody loved Game of Thrones is because they took plot armor and threw it out of the window for the first five seasons. It was like your favorite character could die because that's how the world is. Mm -hmm. And that's a real representation of the world. And I think once a show starts wanting to correct a world that doesn't want to correct itself, mm -hmm. then you lose a certain sense of relate, uh, relatability. I think it's arguable that we do live in a little bit of a Squid Games type world. Not like in, not live in it, but we, we watch the world like a lot of people watch Squid, Squid Game. Game. Where, yeah. look at what happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, Oh shit! This is a good great. This like if you look at how Takeoff's murder, 
is on camera because somebody said the world needs to see this and they recorded it. Same thing um, with P and B Rock. Same thing with Young Dolph. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just like now we live in a world where when shit happened, like that's what people want to see. It remind me of a. Uh, it, re it reminds me of Inglorious Bastards. Remember Inglorious Bastards, where um, one of my faves. all of the Nazis went into the theater and was watching that film, and they were just enjoying the hell out of the dude that was in the in the tower shooting people. Yeah. But then the flip to that is that we enjoyed them burning we via, via us watching Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. Because the, Quentin Tarantino basically did to us what was happening to them in the film. Nah, They're yeah. watching this movie about the who they deem their enemy dying. We're watching the movie who and we, the antagonists are dying, and we're watching enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That motherfucker's a he's a genius. Nah, he is forever. He's forever. Uh, he's legendary forever. He just put out a book called uh, I think called Cinema Perspective. It just dropped last week Tuesday. I'm supposed to go get it. He's a, he's a genius. When nah, we he start is. the Twitch, we gonna start doing film dissertations and shit. Nah, 100. percent Um. But, but now you you raise you definitely raised. No, a good I definitely point. like it when he said that. It made me think a little bit. Like, damn, like we done had a crazy week. It's a crazy that we saw everything mm -hmm. we saw. Because at what point are we those guys in Squid Game that had the mask on that just sat back and watched? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. If those guys make bad decisions in life, or they go into a certain amount of debt, think about it. Squid Game had had gone on for years. That dude went and found number one, but number one was number one. From like the first game, and remember he went in that uh, I don't know if you remember, but the undercover guy in Squid Game went in that back room and seen like thousands of different binders that had all the people's name. So they had been doing this shit for years. Yeah, and I think if one of those guys with the mask that's betting makes the wrong choices, he could end up on in that game. And like you said, it's kind of like the world where that's right. in some in some situations. We're out there with the green suit on fighting for our life. And in some situations, we the guys with the mask sitting up top watching saying, damn, look at this dumbass. Because think about how we look at decisions. Somebody could get hit by a car and people could say, you got certain people who say his stupid ass shouldn't have been out in the street. He got hit by a car. Dummy. But this person just died. Not but we real. look at it on like such a simple, oh, he made a bad mistake. That's why he's gone. Yo, yeah. people make mistakes, and it's costly. If it was your fam, mm -hmm. or you was down there in that green suit, you wouldn't have been saying that. If you had, if you was down there with a number, if you was closer to it, right? At a certain point, we do mm -hmm. each share a certain piece of of that. Well, you know what? That's a good, a good observation. For and me. you know what? On a deeper level than that, now I'm trying to get too deep. But y'all already know what I'm gonna say. When a nigga say he ain't gonna get too deep, you know he's gonna get deep. <laughs> I'm not trying to get too deep, but the niggas already got deep. The billionaires, the billionaires that were betting on the game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They could have been, they could be responsible for institutional, I'm sorry, institutions that, you know, put these people in situations where they were poor, where they had to make bad decisions. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, they're now watching them kill, e kill each other to get out of those situations that they were co-responsible for putting them in. Nah, yeah. That shit is deep. Nah, yeah, because you remember in Squid Game when the dude, the dude who made glass could see the difference between the tempered glass and the fake glass. Mm -hmm. And he literally said, I, I, I'm a glass maker. And because he could see that, the guy said, I feel like this one can see the difference between the glass, so cut the lights off. And then they cut the lights off, and then he couldn't see it anymore. Jumped on the wrong glass and died. Yeah. So you write about how it'll be like, you know what I'm saying? They can definitely set it up to where people can't figure out the way out. Mm -hmm. Nah, that's real. That's definitely Damn. real. Some heavy shit. And it's crazy that he's saying that because, I mean, art imitates life. And I think some art has a bigger imitation than we think. I think that imitation is a little bit more mm -hmm. accurate than we were. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. Um, did you want to touch on the Kyrie situation? Man, I'll, this is what I'll say about the Kyrie situation. I'll, I'll start. Um, so basically, the Brooklyn Nets put out this, um, this list of all of these different tangibles that they want Kyrie Irving to do um, before he can get back in the league. He got to meet with Jewish leaders. He has to sit with, 
I think it's um, the owner and express that he's learned, share that his share his learnings, sit down five hundred k. Yeah, and he's got to do all of his shit. Right now, when that came out originally, I had an issue with it, and it has nothing to do with, um, you know, supporting any anything any of the anti-Semitism, but. It has everything to do with the way Kyrie is being treated, and I look at it as selective outrage. Did you want me to real quick? I have the list right here. You, you got the list here. Let's yeah. hear it. First, issue an apology for posting a link to the movie on October 27th and condemn the harmful and false content and make it clear that he does not have anti-Jewish beliefs. That's number one. Mm-hmm. Number two is complete an anti-hate cause. Complete the anti-hate causes that Irving, the Nets, and Anti-Defamation League agreed upon on their release. Mm-hmm. Uh including a $5,000 donation towards organizations that work to eradicate hate and intolerance in communities. He has to complete a sensitivity training. Uh, he has to complete an anti-Semitic, anti-hate training. He has to meet with represent- representatives from the Anti-Defamation League, as well as Jewish community leaders in Brooklyn. And after completing one through five, he has to meet with the owner, Joe Sai and lead franchise officials and demonstrate the lessons learned and that the gravity of harm caused in that situation is understood and provide assurances that this type of behavior will not be repeated. That's That's crazy. insane to me. Now, let me tell you something. No way. Let me tell y'all something. This is what I'll say, um, because a lot of the things are mixed on this. This type of accountability only applies to black folks. And I, and I am 1,000%. This is where you put out your blue eyes, white dragon, and I put down my smooth, all-black American Express race card. This is where I put it down because, and this is what I'll say uh, behind this. Kyrie apologized for what he, for, you know, he did the apology part. Yeah. He, uh, he apologized. He said, he admitted that the film has some stuff in it that are harmful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He said that. He apologized. Didn't he already pay a fine of like 500K up front? I don't know if he got fined or if he paid I think he has a stiff fine that he's going to have to pay. Bottom line, this man apologized. So, my only thing is, you talking to... This is the thing about black folks. I, this is the way our brains work. You talking to us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't get afforded the apologies. The assurance that the it won't assurance. happen again. We, don't, we get the sorry, and the motherfuckers go on to do whatever movie they was getting ready to do. They go on to sit on whatever platform, or they might have to go lay low for a little while. Yeah. They don't have to. Did we make Justin Bieber sit down and... And, and meet with the NAACP for that video that, that popped up when he was a kid to make sure he don't have no more racist beliefs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sarah Silverman, Howard Stern got all this shit to say, but did blackface for all them years. Said the N-word. Did you have to do all of this? Right. You know what I'm saying? So to me, it is selective, it's selective outrage. Because let me tell you something. It is a fact. Like, and I'm, I'm, I'm No, I'm, you got it. You got it because I'm learning. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go too deep. This is what I'm gonna say. It is a fact. Like Kyrie said, where were you for? Four, where, where were you at for 400 years when my ancestors were being buried here? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And this is my thing. Let's just move on, like y'all move on with everybody else, because not everybody else has to go through this. And I just hate the fact that it took a. It took our people. Especially, it took for black Twitter and social media to make enough of a stir behind how this is selective outrage for our media pundits, our black folks on TV, to say, all right, this is a little bit too much. Now, all of a sudden, you get the Stephen A., the Shannon Sharp, the, the, these people that are coming out and saying, this is harsh. Hold up, though. The way y'all handled this shit was harsh. Yeah, because not because Kyrie doesn't deserve it, because to the point of people that say, I think everybody that I think everybody should be dealt with this way. I also think everybody should be dealt with in a way where we got to make sure that they root out hate. But Mm -hmm. we black. We've also seen that this is not the norm. And now now all of us happen. Right. And now all of a sudden it's happening to Kyrie. And it's like, look, nobody's excusing what he did. We're beyond the film. And everything, because now we're at the point where he tweeted what he tweeted, he apologized for it. Now we're on the other side of it. What do we go forward from this? Right. And y'all way forward is crazy. It is a fact that some of the first slave ships, a lot of the first slave ships, 
were owned by Jews. Okay. Fact. It's a fact. So, is anybody asking for, you know what I'm saying? Like, we the wrong ones to do this with. Because it's the thing. To me, for a black person to say, I don't want to go too deep. I don't go too deep, but y'all know where I'm at with it. Like, I'm not, when I say I stand with Kyrie, it's not in support of anything bad. I stand with Kyrie in the sense that he did something wrong, and I'm not about going to see him buried for it when we watch everybody else get the, okay, you're good now pass. Nah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? For, for things that are harmful to us. You, can't, you ain't going to get that off with us. And I look at the film, this could be far-fetched. I look at the film as like there are pieces of the film that could be, you know what I'm saying? There, there are pieces of the film that have truth, you know what I'm saying, that Kyrie might have resonated with. And there are pieces of that film that could have had some anti-Semitic for sure. um, points in it, right? Mm-hmm. And him apologizing for sharing a film that might have had something like that should be enough. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just... He can also, he has the right to me to firmly believe in what he saw on the film. Like the last podcast we were talking about being responsible with your platform. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see him come out and say like. What he ended up saying. What he ended up saying. You know what I'm saying? But my my biggest beef is this. All of this, oh, make sure that you're, we're we're, we're upset for you sharing the film. Let's talk about this. Do y'all remember when we came out and talked about the third verse in the national anthem and how that has. Some fucking hateful ass it verses talks about slavery. In it. it talks about slavery. Talks about and slavery and about how the uh, uh, the whip will always be mm-hmm. something. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? Y'all are able to say, "Oh fuck that verse," because we see the we see everything that happened in the first two verses. Y'all not gonna stop doing a national anthem. Mm-hmm. Y'all not gonna condemn the national anthem. Y'all got black people singing the national anthem in front of every game, but. I guarantee if we were to come out and say, fuck the national anthem, I'm not saying it. If you was an artist, right? Mm. They would say, wow, that's fucked up. When really, there are pieces of it that they cannot like. So to me, it's like a lane switch because this movie, may, maybe this movie does have something in it. It but does. It, it has like, to, to mm. do this, making it seem like he's a way. They're making him a villain. They're trying to make him Mr. Anti-Semite. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, this is a little bit far fetched. There's a lot of things in the world that has offensive things, and that doesn't um, automatically make this person a believer. You singing the national anthem, I don't think that you believe in the third verse. And this I my, think you singing a, the anthem for what you might have might have known. That's what I'm saying. That's what I, that's what I'm saying. And you know what I also saw on Twitter? Like, there's a lot of people that are saying Kyrie thinks he's a Jew. He he thinks he's a Jew. Like Kyrie says, I can't be anti-Semitic if I know where I come from. Meaning he believes. That he is a Jew. People were saying, he's an idiot. That's anti-Semitic. You're telling him that he's not Jewish, right? So that's anti-Semitic. Nah, for real. That's what it is. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, the whole Kyrie situation is sticky. Like, I hated the way that black media handled that. Nobody, all these platforms, everybody got a podcast. We talked about new Oprah's. Yeah. Everybody got a podcast. Nobody wanted to reach out to Kyrie even if he turns you down, if you said, I tried to reach out to Kyrie to get him on my show type shit and talk about it, that would have been cool. But everybody just trashed this man first, which low-key gave some leeway to the Nets to make it this even bigger deal. And mm-hmm. now everybody want to backpedal when y'all shouldn't have handled it that way anyway. Everybody, if you're like, I was, I, I'm honestly, I was, I was upset with Brian. I didn't think Brian handled that shit right. And I love Brian. He's a black superhero to me. But... Oh, yeah. A lot of people said Brian was playing his cards right for future business moves. He was, but I think you can condemn and also, this is your brother. When you, Brian, when you had that shit come up that he had, you know who's still behind him? Kyrie. Brian ain't never had no shit like this. Brian though. did have some shit. That China shit. Oh, yeah, you're right. No, he yeah, had yeah, it, yeah. So he had, Brian had some shit that Kyrie <laughs> has stood with him on. But my, so, my thing with Brian, though, is this is definitely kind of left field for Brian. It is. I got to step out here. Sure. This is what I'll say. I got to step out here and defend you off some shit that you just tweeted really willy-nilly and they could, it could put me in a bad position. I don't think you should So you're not me. saying you're not... He, Bron didn't say he wasn't standing with him. He just said that, like, he don't... Con- I, everything that y'all saying is going on, I don't stand with. 
This is my thing. What this is what Braun should have did. Braun should have came out and said, "Of course he doesn't. He doesn't agree. Every all of that stuff was fine." Yeah. But you know this man. Like if you had some shit like that come out, or if my man had some shit like that come out, and I got to get on my platform, and somebody say, "What do you think about your friend who tweeted that crazy link?" I would say, "Yo, I don't agree with that. I think that that tweet is crazy, X, Y, Z." But he's a good dude. I know his family. I know he has only the best intentions, and I'm sure this is just a big mishap, but he's a good dude. You know what I'm saying? Like 100%. Some shit like that. Yeah. But just to tie a ribbon on this, I feel like it's selective outrage. It happens with black folks. It's the reason why R. Kelly, who's disgusting, mm-hmm. is in jail, right, for what he did, rightfully so, because he's disgusting, for dating underage girls. But Elvis Presley, who coerced his wife at 14, we make a movie about him, and it's up on the Oscar stage. Nah, yeah. It's, a, it's just all selective. That's all. Is Harvey Weinstein locked up? I believe so. All right, but man. to inquire to Oprah, we need to look at the scope of everything. We can't just focus on him. Yeah, see? It be selective, bro. The shit be selective, and that's my whole point. I don't support any of the any anti-Semitism, but I also support learning your heritage, and I don't believe in selective outrage. And if you apologize, just like everybody else, when they apologize, that should be enough. Nah, yeah. And I don't want to hear, oh, well, he's an NBA player. You know how many celebrities that have platforms apologize? And that was enough? Bet. And that's it. And that be it? Bet. Then let, let's let it be it for Kyrie. He don't need to go and sit with nobody. Yeah, I think the 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 stuff that they did, a little far-fetched. If anything, to me, it shows up, it's a show of power. And that's the word that everybody wants to run away from. But, I mean, hey, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, they trying to, like, make sure he fucking understands. Y'all got more this power is, like, than whipping him in front of everybody ch- type shit. He has to do one through five and then come back and explain how one through five made. If that's not power, I don't know what, what the power fuck is, is that. The, we have an issue with it because we don't see that shit happen when when people exactly. disrespect us. It's just my bad. Didn't mean to do that. It's a corporate correct somebody something that they fucking agent sent up, and then it's just they move on. Nothing right. lost. Nothing. They don't even lose money from this shit. There have been some people who have said some shit. The son's owner said some fucked up shit. There's been some NFL, NBA owners that have said some shit and have had to sell the team and certain stuff like that. So we're not saying that they've never been held accountable. We're just saying, at this extent, come on, y'all. Did they do this when that white boy would call them dudes niggas and they play for the Eagles? Went in there and beat up them dudes? No, nah, that's what I'm in saying. The bar? Like this, and that's the thing. If you do some, Donald Sterling was talking crazy. Have you, ever, have you revisited that? This man was talking the crazy. Clippers. Yeah. So it was only it was like no way around this, but well something like this it, this man tweeted the link, and it's a little bit of a controversy behind, I don't know, but movie suggestion of the week, the motherfucking good nurse. It's a movie called The Good Nurse on Netflix, Eddie Redmayne, Jessica Chastain, two beasts, um. Basically, the movie is about, you know, these two nurses that work at a hospital and randomly patients start dying. And one nurse gets suspicious that the nurse that's her friend might have something to do with it. It is like if y'all have ever seen Prisoners by Denny Villeneuve, it is just like that. Like that vibe, that gritty. Oh, wow. It's not fun. Who's Who's in that? Eddie Redmayne. Okay. Beast. Jessica yeah. Chastain. Beast. That's your nurse one and nurse two. I ain't going to tell you which one is good or bad. All I'm going to tell you is that that joint is just like, it, it gave me a very prisoner's vibe. It's dark. It's based on a true story. That's the one. That's my movie suggestion of the week. Damn, y'all. I don't even know what to have for my movie, movie suggestion inter, uh, of the week. I'm trying to use that. Uh, what's the joint that we were talking about earlier? Ex Machina. Ex Machina is good. It's on HBO Max. It's on HBO Max. Uh, the movie, my movie suggestion of the week. I don't know if this has been my movie suggestion of the week before, but my movie suggestion of the week this week is on HBO Max. It's called In the Mood for Love. Terrell, I don't know if you heard that much. Mo- you have said that was your movie suggestion of the week before. No, it was not. It was not. It was not. And you know what? If it ain't, I mean, if you haven't seen that movie, it's by my, my boy um, Juan Carr. Juan Carr, or 
Car Y Wong. I feel like you can put his name in a million different ways. Mm -hmm. But the way that he uses movie music in that movie, immaculate. And you know what I might have had? This is a movie suggestion, but it's on HBO Max. It's a great love story. It is in a different language, but trust me, that is a good movie. I'm going to give y'all another one because I definitely do have another one. Uh, and this movie is going to be one that I feel like y'all not going to go and watch. But it's on Netflix. It's, getting, it's by a guy that I feel like y'all might not really like, Woody Allen. Uh, but it's one of my favorite. It's, it's actually a personal, weird personal favorite of mine. It's called Blue Jasmine. Kate Blanchett, buddy from... What's that joint that we just watched? I forget what, what that joint that show is we just watched. But Blue Jasmine. Uh, oh, it has Bobby Can uh, Cannavale in it. Yep, and Alec, Alec Baldwin's, Baldwin's mm -hmm. crazy ass is in it. Sally Hawkins plays the uh, her little sister. Mm -hmm. Yep. But Blue Jasmine is a great movie, especially for my loners out there, my independent women. Y'all go watch that jump. That's on Netflix, too. That's on Netflix, too. That is actually a personal favorite of mine. The vibe of that movie, I could watch that movie at any time. Love the screenplay for that movie also. Kate Blanchett killed it. Kate Blanchett won her first Academy Award for that movie. Well, actually, that might have been her second win, but that was her first win in the lead role. So, Kate Blanchett's performance in that, that's like literal Tom Brady on the Buccaneers right now, mm -hmm. trying to hold everything together. But not even that, you know? It's like Lamar Jackson mm -hmm. on the Ravens right yeah. now. <laughs> you know they submitted your boy Kristen Cole and Damon from House of Dragon for Emmys. Kristen Cole? That's what I said. What the fuck did he do? Who had a better performance than him outside of Damon for supporting? Patty. Patty's going to get lead. 100% going to get lead. He's lead. What supporting male in that show did better than Sir Kristen Cole? Acting. I like Viserys. I'm not Viserys, but um, what's his name? Sea Snake. He ain't getting a fucking name. Sea Snake did. Dot. He did good. Nobody did better than Damon, honestly. They need to they need to submit Damon. That's it. Yeah. Maybe the women, the women. They killed. have women in that show. Yeah. The women they, run. The they, women run that. They kill. The lady who played Allison Hightower grown up to me needs to be Olivia Cook. 100 percent Her. The lady who played Rainier grown up too. Mm. They kill. They they just hand they, they, they start eating. Young Rainier did her thing. Everybody was talking about that. Young Rhaenyra did deserve something. You know she's 23. For real. She old. She played like a 15-year-old in the show, but she's really art. She's really 20-something oh, yeah. years old. Damn, she yeah. old. Oh. Welcome back to the NFL Picks, dog. Week 10. It's crazy to think that we week 10 weeks in. To me, this season is moving by way too damn fast. But... We're going to start this off with some respect. I got to put respect on the Baltimore Ravens. Mm -hmm. I did not pick the Ravens. I have to put respect on... Did you wow. pick the Lions? You I picked, picked the, the Lions. Oh, okay. Let me go see who I got to put respect on. The Jaguars. I got to put respect on the Jaguars. Raiders, y'all suck. Y'all the worst team. I can't believe we let y'all bum ass beat us. Y'all suck. I got to put respect on... Did the Titans beat the Chiefs? The Titans did not beat the Chiefs. I about to say, let me see. That. that was too close of a game for the Chiefs, though. I got to put respect on a couple joints. I got to put respect on the Jets. The Jets went out there and beat the Buffalo Bills. The Are Jets, you kidding me? 100%. Are you kidding? Um, I got to go out there and put respect on, if I'm not mistaken, Panthers? No. No. The team that bust y'all ass. Put respect on them. Who everybody says is overrated, but they 7-1. I gotta Vikings. Put, yep, put respect on the Vikings. I got to put respect on the uh, Buccaneers. I actually picked the Rams. Damn. Wow. It, uh, uh, Bengals, Bengals I'll went put out there respect and, and on did I. I'm going to say, I'll put respect on the Vikings. However, I felt like we actually had y'all beat. I'm not going to say we should have won, but low-key, we shot ourselves in the foot. That was a very yeah. tough Sunday for me, like... I was dead ass hurt like fuck that we lost. Yep. So, and you know what? The fun teams had a bye week. Cowboys was on a bye. We was on a bye. We're only fun because people like to watch us lose. Sure, y'all not a fun team. Giants was on a bye week. 49ers. Y'all are not a fun team. All right, but look, let's get into week 10, y'all. Week 10, Thursday night. We got that rematch. Uh, Panthers and Falcons. Well, Falcons are going to the Panthers this time. But remember, DJ Moore caught that last touchdown. It was crazy the end of the of the last game. They, they just played week before last. 
So why I'm, do I not see that? Why do I see Thursday Titans and Packers? Oh, I'm tripping. That's next week. Yeah, we week ten with it. Damn, okay, we that. already at week ten. Yeah, bro. Okay, Falcons Panthers. I'm picking the Falcons. Well, remember what happened? DJ Moore and then went down the field last time and scored that touchdown. Mm-hmm. And then they missed the extra point, missed the field goal, and the Falcons got lucky. It's, do- it's dope they're playing each other this close again. I'm still picking the Falcons. I'm going to pick the Falcons to win, too, just because Panthers, I really I feel so scared to put money on y'all. P.J. Walker, been doing all right. The Falcons, yo, low-key Falcons, this is a, a must-win game for y'all. This is a must-win for the Falcons. You think about it? How? No, what's must win for the Panthers? They two and seven. I mean, but look, y'all two and seven. Yeah, y'all season is done. You can't let these motherfuckers. Falcons, if y'all win, this is a divisional game. Five and five. I don't know what's going on in y'all division. Y'all got the Saints in y'all division, but like when you think about it, let me go look at this. Sta- oh, oh, I got it right there. The Saints. The standings. Oh, yeah, the Saints aren't good. They three and six. Atlanta's competing for that top spot. Yeah, see, this is a must win game for the it Falcons. Is. I'm going Falcons. I'm gonna go Falcons too. Tampa Bay is still leading their division. They've been playing like trash. Well, guess what? Look, that's who's next. Sunday morning, um, the London game is Seahawks at Buccaneers. Tom Brady and them are losing. I'm about to say, I'm going with Geno. I'm not picking against Geno and them yet. I'm going against, I'm, I'm picking Geno. I picked makes, against Geno one time and lost. It makes us look so bad because we got Russ. These motherfuckers is about to be. They said the Seahawks was on slated to be one of the worst teams in the league. They're six mm-hmm. and three. Potential seven and three. And you know what? Y'all are one of the worst teams in the league. Broncos. Denver. Denver. Trash. <laughs> but I'm picking Geno. Low-key, y'all should have got Geno. If y'all had Geno, y'all might be some beasts. Geno, yeah. with them speedy receivers y'all got? Mm-hmm. Well, I look, I'm picking the Seahawks. It sucks they to got watch these for five more years. I know, right? He said, I got my money. Fuck it. Let's ride. Yeah, we about to drop your ass and let somebody else pick up that contract. Y'all, right, look, y'all got him on a Russell Westbrook contract. He ain't going nowhere. We gave, right, we gave up picks, gave this motherfucker all. He needs and everything. to come through. All right, look, this is the biggest test for this Vikings team going to uh, New York to play the Buffalo Bills. Let me just tell you, I am picking the shit. I'm picking the Vikings. The Vikings. I said it once. I'll say it again. T.J. Hawkinson on that team is going to be special. He was showing up against Washington. Um, he was. The Vikings don't win by large margins. Like, people give them shit because they haven't blown out a team. You know what I'm saying? And they lost. When they played a real elite team in the Eagles, they lost. Yeah. Now they about to play another elite team in the Bills, and they got something to prove. I'm so picking, I'm picking the, Bills. the Vikings. Bills. Bills, yeah. We just went up against this Vikings team, and we almost won. If we didn't shoot ourselves in the foot, if Taylor Heineke does not throw that pick, and put them in field goal range, I do feel like we could have drove down the field, went up three scores on them bums. Y'all are overrated. I know y'all been winning games. That's crazy. And I've been picking y'all. But after seeing our team go up against y'all, y'all really did not look that dangerous on offense. Dalvin Cook, I mean, he showed up when he needed to, but we weren't struggling with Dalvin. Y'all got, y'all got mixed up by Jettas. Sure, we really did. Like I said, y'all. Jettas didn't have this immaculate, crazy game. He had some big plays because he is a big play player. But low key, he that, had one sixteen for two tutties. All I'm gonna say, he didn't have two tutties. He had at least he did. No, he didn't. He had one touchdown. He had one touchdown. That was cool. But my man Benjamin St. Jukes was strapping him on some on some on some plays. And, and look, all I'm gonna say is this: y'all did that against us. Y'all struggled against us. Y'all driving down the field last minute, kicking a field goal and running the clock down on Washington. And I'm supposed to pick y'all against Buffalo, even though Buffalo just lost to the, to the Jets, but the Jets are, you never know who the Jets are now. I'm picking the fucking Bills. Josh Allen is a way better quarterback than Taylor Heineke. And if Taylor Heineke can get out there and dog on y'all a little bit, I'm going okay, with Josh yeah. Allen. Man, I'm picking the Vikings, man. I believe in, uh, what do they call him? Kirk Cuh. Kirk Cuh. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like seeing him dancing around with the jewelry and shit. Oh yeah, why? Bring back a little bit of pain from Washington days. No, I don't got nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? It's like I don't know. Oh, I see where you're going with it. It's like invite him to the cookout type shit. Take that shit off him. It's not his shit. Yeah, this shit is funny to me. All right, 
Uh, it's funny to everybody. It's funny he yeah. Kirk Cousins uh cut up though. You see that? Motherfuckers thought he looked like a dad under them uh pads. Nah, Kirk Cousins. Nah, he out there like white DK. <laughs> 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 All right, bet. Uh Lions at Bears. I'm going with the Bears. I want this. Justin line. Fields went crazy. And I feel like the Lions are frauds. I'm sorry. And I thought I'm on that's why I was getting ready to say I want this Lions team to do good so bad. And I have Jamal Williams on my fantasy team. Bears. But I also have Justin Fields. Started him over Herbert. He's a monster. I'm I picking see, the Bears. I want to see the Bears do good more than I want to see the Lions do good. I want Justin Fields to get some respect in his league. I think people are starting to cast him out. And people started saying, man, yeah, he's this, but he just needs. Nah, man. Low key, I think he needs to show and show his talents for what he can. So we can say, you know what? Let's get some talent around this mm-hmm. dude. Yeah, I'm gonna pick the Bears too. Do y'all remember Lamar Jackson's first couple years? Yeah, where he just kind of got the ball and ran, and and it's just like whatever. But then once he got a real shot with that team, he and was they a shit dog. on Lamar. They were saying he should be a wide receiver. Uh huh. He should maybe be a running back. Mm-hmm. Do you see what Justin Fields be doing with running the ball? It's because they started to work. At, they start building that system around him. Yeah, Shout I'm going with Bears. The Bears. I'm picking the Bears too. Jaguars at Chiefs. I thought he just said he was picking the Lions. No, I'm picking the Bears. I want the Lions team to do good, uh, but I'm starting Justin Fields. I need another 40 point. Damn, yeah. Uh, Jaguars, Chiefs, this ain't going to take me long. I'm picking the Chiefs. That's the best team I'm in the league. I'm picking the Chiefs, too. I'm picking the best team in the league, the Kansas City Chiefs. Hmm, that's funny. Hmm, that's funny, but guess what? All nobody, None of y'all want smoke when it comes playoff time. None of you. Sorry. None yeah, but we going to see what that's about this year. Yeah, all right. Because he I was looking mighty. What team in, in the AFC? He was looking mighty alone out there. Joint. What team in the AFC is really a threat to the Chiefs? Bills. Really? Yeah. Y'all just went out there lost to the Jets. We beat y'all, though. <laughs> do it again when it comes. Do it again when it Chiefs matters. Chiefs lost to the Colts. Do it again when it matters. Because what happened last year? All right, Why? bet. We're going to see about Why? it. All right. Don't sleep. Sent Diggs home. Sick. Even though that was when he was looking. Yeah, all right, bet. Hey, motherfucking. All right, all right, bet. Like, let's go. We picked the Chiefs, right? I'm picking Chiefs for the get to Jaguars. I'm picking the Chiefs too, even though fuck the Chiefs. Um, Browns at the best team in the league, Dolphins. Fuck around and talk about it. That's the game that I want to see. When do they play? Two are having loss. Oh, after playing play? a full game. They play 1 p.m. Browns at Dolphins. No, I'm saying I want to see Chiefs Dolphins. I want oh, that. I don't know when they play. Yeah. But Browns at Dolphins, I'm picking the Dolphins. But then again, I'm picking the Dolphins too. Bradley Chubb, wanna, didn't the Browns just go out there and do work? Let me go back and see. Mm, I don't remember that. Didn't the Browns go out there and dog the Bengals last I think week? they was on a, no, they was on a, uh, a bye week. That was the week before. Oh, they was on a bye. Well, they look, they coming off a high. Coming off a high, but look. Jacoby Brissett not one to fuck around with. He is. And, Nick, and Tua. Nick Chubb. Yeah, That's but, what I meant to say. My bad. Tua is him. And it's time that motherfuckers start putting respect on his name. I think people are hesitant to put respect on Tua's name because they talked so much shit about him and was right for so long because they weren't good. Now, I'm I'm picking the Browns. They're tripping. Y'all want to know why? Two of them went out there and were struggling with Justin Fields. Terrence, but they haven't They let Justin Fields put up 32 points. Justin Fields is also... We played the Bears. Crazy on them. Other teams have played the Bears. We have laughed at the Bears all year. They y'all play, played y'all the Bears y'all let before they changed their system, Terrence. True, but let's keep it a hundo. The Bears haven't put up that many points on any team. They put up that many points. I don't think the Bears have scored that many points this year. And they went out there and put up 32 points on a Dolphins, supposed to be the best team in the AFC East. Go ahead, pick the Browns. Go ahead. Or the AFC? I'm picking the Browns. Nick Chubb about to go out there and say, Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> Look, uh, Amari Cooper, he was going off. And this is one more week, and you know who coming back in town. Who? Watson. Oh, shit. He finna show up. Oh, shit, yeah. Week what, 13, 11? Something I like think that? it's week 11, right? He got to spend it for 11 weeks. Well, maybe the week 12. Something like that. That team I'm is getting ready. I'm picking the motherfucking Dolphins. Pick them. All right, bet. Texas at New York Giants. G-Men. They're going to win. I'm picking the G-Men. And the too. Giants about to be 7-2 and two and could potentially take the division lead. Giants, wait till we play y'all. Oh, but you know what? They won't take the division lead because they, they don't have wait a division lead. Wait till we play y'all, Giants. Wait. Because I felt like the Giants are... 
I don't give a fuck what y'all say. Whenever I pick the Giants, y'all go out there and lose. So you picking who? You picking the Texans? Giants fans. Sorry! <laughs> Watch the Texans go out there and ball out. Damian, Damian Pierce. Pierce. Yes, sir. He's a beast. Like y'all got, got the Giants fucked up. The Giants? I'm picking the Texans. Because Giants fans, when I pick y'all, what y'all go out there and do? Win. Lose. And this is going to be one of them picks that I regret. Because y'all need, y'all should win. But watch y'all go out there and fucking lose. Watch. I'm picking the Giants. So you picking the Giants? I'm picking the Texans. And you know what the Giants fans are probably saying? Good. Because when he pick against us, we win. Because that's really what happens, Giants. So why do it? Because when I pick them, they lose. I just picked the Giants last week and they lost. It was niggas hitting me. You see what happens when you pick us, bruh. But when you pick them, they win. And when you, no, when, when I you pick, don't pick them, they win. But when I don't pick them, they win. And so low-key, I want the Giants to win that game. Mm. Because, look, we're not going to do nothing in the NFC East. But I don't like the Cowboys. And I don't like the Eagles. I want to see the Giants be that team. I'd rather deal with the Giants. Us and Giants fans, we cool. It's like, fuck them. And they say, fuck us. But whatever. You know, it's respect. Eagles fans and Cowboys fans are both collectively the worst when they, when they are the, the best team. I've never in my life seen so many Eagles flags and Eagles fans and Eagles gear out here. I've never in my life. Y'all some fuckboy ass fans. But you know what? This happens. Because when your team is undefeated. Look, they, mind you, they undefeated. We went through it. So you seeing a whole lot of... Trust me. When y'all get, Where y'all was get at? Lamar next year. If we get Lamar... If we were to get Lamar, man. All right, back. Come on. Uh, Saints at Steelers. Saints at Steelers. I'm going with uh. Man. I want to pick the Saints, but y'all look bad the other night. They so injured, bro. I'm picking the Saints. I'm picking the Steelers. I have no reason to pick the Steelers. I mean, what do the Steelers look like? George Pickens. Both of y'all. This is gonna be a tough game to watch. I'm gonna pick the Steelers you at know home. What? I'm picking the Steelers. Pick the Steelers at home. Najee has been terrible this year, bro. He had literally been non-existent. Didn't he get injured to start the year, though? No. He's been playing. He had just been trash. Damn. It's the play call. It ain't Mike Tomlin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking the Steelers. Um, you got Saints? I'm picking Steelers. All right, bet. Broncos at Titans. We, I don't think we're going to win this game. I'm picking us, but I don't think we're going to win. I really don't. I felt like when we beat the Jaguars, right? Yeah. And look, we get we coming out. We gonna wear our white top, blue bottom uh, uniform, same uniform we won in London. All right, bet. Let's see what we gonna do then, because this team is five and three, and they just hung in there with the Chiefs. Y'all about to lose. They just lost to the Chiefs. Twenty. What do y'all run defense look like? Our run, we with have that a, man in the back. We have the best pass defense. One of the best pass defense in the league. We have a top three overall defense. First of all, our defense is, is stout. Just lost Chubb. Just lost Chubb. I haven't seen the field since. But still. Last time, we <laughs> lost to the uh, Titans 13-12. Damn. 13 to 12. One in the first down. <laughs> <laughs> Last time, we held Derrick Henry to 38 yards. But I just don't see us winning, man. I don't see our offense being able to put up points. But we'll see. I think Tannehill's back next week, too. So Malik Willis won't be out there joint stinking it up. But I'm picking my Broncos to win. I hope we win. I just don't think we are. I'm picking the Titans. All Sorry. Right, Colts at Raiders. Colts. I'm picking Raiders. the Raiders. Y'all suck. Y'all pick- are so terrible. I'm picking the Raiders. I don't like the fact that the Colts signed Jeff Saturday just because he's a cool guy. I thought that that was bullshit. I felt like there's a lot of coaches. Like I, feel, I agree with what uh, uh, Spears said, Marcus Spears. But well, he was like, there's probably a bunch of coaches that have been in the trenches with the Colts franchise since minicamp, since training camp, since before the even season started, trying to put in work with these guys that have earned those guys in the locker room's respect. And y'all go and the, the Colts owner goes and brings in Jeff Saturday and says, you know, it's a good thing that he doesn't have experience. You know, these coaches in the league, they're all about analytics. They're all about getting this, this, and that, and they're scared. And you know what? For him to not have experience is a good thing. Are you fucking serious? Yeah, that's wild. When most coaches get played for not having experience so they don't get a job. Like a lot of people are saying, most coaches got to start from the fucking bottom and work their way up. But this dude to get an interim job, I want them to lose. 
Nah, that is wild. Even though Jeff Saturday is a cool guy, I want them motherfuckers. I want him to lose because the the Colts owner talking that shit. We're in the top percentile of winning teams. We're in the top percentile. All right, now I want you to lose the rest of your games <laughs> because you're talking too much shit. Nah, yeah, you roll Peyton's back and Dungey's back for two for for mm. years, and now you low key y'all got rid of Wentz sense. and got Matt Ryan and thought that that was this great ass move, and people was gassing it. We tried to tell y'all that Matt Ryan was washed. The same way they tried to tell Even us. though Wentz is job washed, he's had a better season this year than Matt Ryan. And he hasn't even been playing in the last couple games. Matt Ryan on that bench. And let me tell you something. Wentz is next to, to, to sit on that bench. Because the way Heineke out there balling. Mm-hmm. Four. All right, look. I, well, you know what? I'm going to pick the Raiders because I do think the Raiders, I think the Raiders will go out here and win. Devontae Adams went off, but... I'm just not seeing what y'all were supposed to be, Raiders. Y'all was talking big shit to us. Honestly, Raiders, I don't get it. Y'all are just as bad as we are. I don't get it. Why are y'all losing games? See, that just come my man Abram. I love Abram. Watch them on Hard Knocks. Somebody made a list of all of the people that they had to cut for. You saw that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was ridiculous. It's terrible. And you know what? I love to see Josh McDaniels doing bad. His fat ass. Fuck him. Why do you not like Josh McDaniels like that? This motherfucker came to our team and stunk it up and said, fuck you, I'm going back to Den back to the Patriots. So oh, we fired yeah. him. He was like, all right, whatever. Fuck you. I'm going back to. It's like, but you trash. So guess what? You go in high. You know he said, fuck it. Because it, nah, it's the way he handled it. He might not have said those words, but it was like, well, we always got a home here. So went back to play with Belichick. Yeah. Now you're going, you're going to coach our rival? Oh, we definitely praying on your downfall. And guess what? You over there stinking it up. And Raiders fans, we tried to tell y'all that Devontae Adams, it don't matter if you got Devontae, if you have Derek Carr. He's not A-Rod. A-Rod is a winner, believe it or not, unless, until, until the playoffs. Or oh, until recently, because that motherfucker was out there joint looking crazy. Nah, so yeah, I, I don't know y'all. what's going on with the Raiders. Speaking but of- I'm picking them. I'm picking the Colts. Fuck y'all. Um... Speaking of the um, Aaron Rodgers, he always plays his best games against the Dallas Cowboys. I'm picking Cowboys, but I think the Cowboys. I, I do think the Cowboys are gonna win because Aaron Rodgers look. Aaron Rodgers is stressed the fuck out. He is stressed the fuck out, bro. He is stressed. You definitely him gonna... and Brady, low key. I don't think that I'm gonna pick them anymore this year. I didn't pick them. I picked the I picked Gino on them, yeah. Pick Gino. Him and Brady just seem stressed. They just seem like old men that are mad that they don't have like talent around them. And now you're not elite enough to be great. Tom Brady can't say that. You got Mike Evans. Them motherfuckers Chris be Godwin. dropping the ball. Mike Evans definitely have been doing. He have been dropping the ball. But they you can't say you don't got talent around you. You got a dope Scottie ass Miller. line. Scotty Miller had the winning touchdown in his hands and dropped it. It's like yo. Now nah, that is stressful. Which is I don't know what that is. Now. I'm going with the Cowboys because the Cowboys have Dak back. They have that great ass defense. This is a statement yeah. game for the Cowboys. And they know they normally struggle against Green Bay, so they come in for blood. And the Cowboys have only lost two games. It's mm-hmm. crazy. They literally didn't have their quarterback for five weeks and Still won all those six, games. <laughs> six and two. It's insane. I'm picking the Cowboys too. Cardinals at Ram is always a good one. I am going to pick. You know, Buddha Baker out for three weeks. Right after that little rah rah moment, mm-hmm. I'm gonna pick the um, I'm gonna pick the Cardinals. Only reason I'm picking the Cardinals is because Matt Stafford's in concussion protocol, so he he probably not gonna play. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the Cardinals because also the Rams. Y'all got the same. Y'all got a worse record than we do. We won more games than the Rams, mm-hmm. but they go. But if it was Rams against Washington, Rams, 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 <laughs> fuck out of here. I don't know what's going on with y'all. Y'all have an elite-ass team. All that money that they spent on the Rams. Aaron Donald, Cooper Cup, who's supposed to be this triple crown guy, the best receiver in the league is Cooper Cup, right? Mm-hmm. Still? Cooper Cup still be going off. Would you rather have Jay Jettas or Cooper Cup? Cup, 1,000%. You One, would rather right now when the Broncos have Cooper Cup over One Jay Jettas? 1,000% give me Cooper Cup, triple crown. Cooper Cup changes your whole offense. Let me tell you something about Jettas versus Cup. And fantasy owners will tell you this. And I've tried to trade Jettas for Cup a couple of times, and the nigga won't give him to me. Cooper, J- Jay Jettas goes quiet sometime. Jettas will get quiet, and you'll get 12 points from him. You never go through that with Cooper Cup. You don't. 
But I heard that the 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 Rams offense is also that's his that's Matt Ryan's guy. I mean Matt Matt Stafford's guy. Like looking for him. It is, man, but I feel like people be trying to discredit Cooper Cup. I'm not gonna discredit him. I'm just saying, damn, we would really rather have Cooper Cup than Jay Jettis? I mean, Jay Jettis is a little bit younger, but I'm taking Cooper Cup. Jay Jettis goes quiet. Cooper Cup is triple crown Super Bowl MVP. You take him. You don't, there is no, damn, my computer died. But um, I think it's only two games left, right? The Sunday night game and the Monday yeah. night. But I'm going Cardinals. You're going Cardinals. We're both going Cardinals, yes. And maybe I do take Jettis. All right, we got the Chargers. The Sunday night game, y'all. Chargers at 49ers. The Chargers are 5-3? What? Yeah. The Chargers have been playing good the last couple of weeks. I'm going with the Chargers. I'm picking the 49ers. Ed McCaffrey. I mean, not, wow, Ed McCaffrey. Fuck Broncos legend. Good. Christian McCaffrey. Oh, Christian McCaffrey. I just, um, I'm picking the, I'm picking the 49ers. Terrell's not going to start Herbert. I'm not and starting Herbert's going to have a big game watch. Yeah, all right, we haven't seen in a couple weeks, Herbie. I'm picking the Chargers. I'm picking the 49ers. And the last game of the week, the Monday night game in front of the world, the Washington Commanders Mm -hmm. against the Philadelphia undefeated Eagles. Let me tell you something, Philly. I swear on everything if we win this game. I swear on everything. (laughs) If we win this game, we will be, we will, I swear to God, we will be so hyped. If we win this, Philly, if we come to Philly with Taylor Heineke, and win this game, and Chase Young might be might be playing again. Really, might. If we come to Philly and win this game, Philly, I will. I swear to God, y'all will never hit it. And y'all already beat us. <laughs> and give these motherfuckers. If we first give win, y'all, y'all, I mean, first, first loss. L, you think we don't want that? Philly, y'all know who the fuck we are. I'm gonna fuck what y'all say. Hey, all right. Talk shit. I don't give a fuck about the record. I don't give a fuck about none of that. Y'all know what's good with us. Same way y'all know what's good with the Giants. The same way y'all know what's good with the Cowboys. If this was another team, it'd be whatever. But this not that. Y'all know what's good. And now, on Monday night, where we normally lose. We went to the Monday game, night game the last time. Mm-hmm. We normally get our ass whooped by Philly on Monday night. This is where we get our revenge right here. I'm picking the Commanders. Wasn't it Monday night when Mike Vick and Deshaun Watson torched up? The Monday night massacre. <laughs> In Washington. That was Andy Reid, though. So Nah, yeah. I mean, but this this team, Nick this team in Philly, that crowd, that environment, we could definitely go out here and lose by 40. Yeah. I'm telling you. But, bro, I got a feeling this. I got a feeling. What's the name of their stadium? Ooh, ooh, Lincoln, Lincoln Financial. Financial. Yeah. We getting ready to go out there and prove the world wrong. Watch this, y'all. When we go out there and bust their ass, when we go out there and the final score says that the commanders won, Cause the Eagles been sound. Eagles been looking a little. Take that fucking L. First L of the season came where? It came from them boys from DC. <laughs> fuck you talking about? <laughs> you hope you hope like shit. Nah, fuck that. We winning this game. Watch y'all. Mark my words. Hold on, why? We will win this game. I'm picking the Eagles. I'm not picking it y'all to win. Taylor Heineke gonna get out there. He's been having some lucky ass fuck it moments. Yeah, he have. Because guess what? It's a, it's a nine on our record, but they ain't got a nine on their record yet. This is how I'm going to add it up. Y'all not going to see that nine and no. Y'all going to see that eight and one. It's still a nine, but that's a part of it. Y'all need a loss this season to humble Tell y'all. you talking a little too much. Y'all need a loss this season to humble y'all. These motherfuckers already got out there on y'all. Just watch. watch. You better cover the middle. Yeah, better hope Jamin Davis is playing better this time because he was getting mixed up. When we played them, we was a little thrown off. They was cheating like shit. They had wins too. Remember when? It, remember, bro was out of bounds. Philly. Oh, yeah. uh, the rest was helping Philly like shit the last time. We and played. y'all had wins. And y'all we had a better wins team with Heineke. Was probably out there. Oh shit! 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 <laughs> Fuck out of here. Heineke is a fighter. Even though he made a mistake last game, I firmly, I firmly feel like if Ridgeway didn't do that bullshit he did on special teams, and Heineke got another chance to go down the field, he would have been able to go down there. On that team, I felt like he deserved that two minutes to go down, but he didn't get it because of fucking rage Ooh. way. Hope y'all on in because I'm tired. Anyway, Commanders, let's uh, get it. Mm-hmm. And that wraps up 126. Damn, I played that shit a little too fast. It's all good. 
We been running these two hour pods. Y'all motherfuckers better be grateful. <laughs> Next time.